Good evening, everybody. My name is Cameron, and welcome back to the bar. Today, I'm planning on exploring one of my favorite caffeinated beverages of all time. Tea. No, just kidding. It's coffee. I had... I guess a very, I wouldn't say it's a very unusual upbringing with coffee. I think it started out probably like most other people's impressions of coffee and stuff. Once upon a time, I remember growing up in my parents' condominium. I was very, very young at the time. Eventually, we moved on to a house. The family started to grow. The kitchen needed to grow. The bedrooms needed to grow. Everything needed to grow. I needed to grow because I was a very young, young, young boy at the time. I distinctly remember aromas, something almost savory in the air, something almost chocolatey that would like envelop almost the entire entire house some, on some mornings before my father would go into work or before my mother. I don't think, when after I was born, I don't think my mother was working at the time until a little bit later, but she was always a bit of a coffee drinker herself. That aroma of coffee would follow me through most of my life up until a point where I decided I think it was probably time for me to start drinking coffee myself. I just kind of tried it a little bit in like middle school. I don't think it was really like a thing that I wanted at the time. I just kind of sit it with like, eh. This is interesting. I just kind of moved on with my day, uh, as I feel like a lot of all their other, I, I say youngins, but I guess it really wasn't that long ago, like 10 years or so. I feel like 10 years for a lot of people is not actually that long a time. I'm relatively young, so it feels like a long time for me at least. It's over, it's almost half of my life, over a quarter of my life. Anyway, I don't, I'm not here to brag about how young I am. Eventually I will be old and all of this stuff will be a thing of the past. But in any case, eventually I got to a point, I think it was around college time, where I started really going out and seeking coffee on my own. That was around the time that different sort of educational functions that I would go to would be providing free coffee. And I thought to myself at the time, was, well, I'm a, I'm a college student. Why would I deny any sort of free thing that is placed in front of me? If I needed to wake up, if I needed something warm to start me off in the morning, I would go for the coffee. Now, prior to all the free stuff happening, I was on a meal plan. When I entered into college for the first year, they required you to have a meal plan. You needed to have a certain number of dollars to purchase your meals, and you had, I think, three meals that you could use throughout the day, but one during, I guess, the breakfast time, the lunch time, and the end time. I, I got food. I gained a little freshman 15. Not, not the big 15. Maybe it was like more like a freshman 10, I suppose. I'm, I'm a rather flimsy individual. Um, I'm a very... I'm very lightweight. Uh, it's not my fault. It's, it's, I don't even think it's genetics. Um, but in any case, very light body. Very small boy. Only like 5'6". But by the time my second year came around, I had still, I hadn't used up all of the credits that my school meal plan had allotted to me. Um, in addition to the meal, the meals, I guess, that they would provide to you, they also added this certain currency every single quarter. My school was on a quarter system as opposed to a semester system, which would be like half the year round. And I had this big bulk like wallet of these dragon dollars left over. And I was like, what the heck am I supposed to spend these dragon dollars on? And the options were rather limited. I could go to the dining halls, which I had already grown accustomed to and correspondingly jaded from. Uh, naturally, I was so, I didn't want to go back to them because they served really, really odd scrambled eggs and really, really greasy burgers, which were pretty good, but not as good as Shake Shack, which was literally right next door. Um, and for the most part, you could use these extra dragon currency things that I now had over 300 of individual dollars on mostly coffee shops around campus. And for the most part, you weren't really able to exchange these dragon dollars for anything more than, let's say, a pastry or, correspondingly, a cup of coffee or a frappuccino from the various different Starbucks locations that was on campus. So I had the bright idea of taking these dollars of mine, of extra young second year in college, and you just spend it on a bunch of coffee. At least once or twice a day, I would go to the local Starbucks and I would try a different frappuccino because I wanted to try everything on the menu, but like of a particular subsection of the menu and there was only so many coffee bean options, but there were plenty of different frappuccino options that uh, that would also change out depending on the season. So during the entire course of my sophomore year of college, as I had to use all of these dollars, there were various different options. You got your coconut, your coconut frap, probably. I, I don't remember that specifically. There was definitely a peppermint frap. There was definitely mocha fraps. There were a bunch of different frappuccinos. And there eventually, I started getting it. I started realizing that among all the different frappuccino flavors, there was some common point between all of them. And lo and behold, Duh. It was sugar, mostly, cream, sometimes, but mostly coffee. There was always this bitter underlying flavor that at first I was like, eh, this is, I'm not really sure if I'm really into this, but I grew to love over the course of the year as I kept putting more and more of it into my body. Now, I like to tell myself that it's because I like the flavor of coffee. I love coffee. It's a very tasty flavor, but I think there's probably some sort of physiological change that happens, something probably neurocentric that my brain was just like, ooh, caffeine. 
Caffeine may heart rate go up. Heart rate go up, serotonin and dopamine to brain. Feel energy, feel not tired. Caffeine good is probably what my brain was thinking at the time. And so I translated that as a very logical being to being, I like coffee, coffee's pretty good. And that's, that's kind of, I kind of went on running from there. I continued to drink coffee. I found out that if you, I found over time I was drinking so much of the coffee that um, I was kind of, I felt like I was kind of, I don't think I was necessarily gaining pounds or anything, but I started feeling bad about it. I was like, I am drinking a lot of coffee. Is this potentially bad for me? And as most people do on the internet, I went out and I did my own research and I found that the best way that you can drink coffee is without, a, the worst part about it is all the sugar and stuff. And it's all the syrups and whatnot that you wind up putting into your body because that's a lot of sugar in there. And so the logical conclusion to that was, if I want to drink a lot of coffee and not do it bad, then I should probably drink coffee black. And then I, that started around, I think my third year of college and it has continued up until now, almost five to six years later. I like coffee now, I, it's a part of my diet I'd say more or less every single day, although I go through times of the years where it kind of makes my reflux go all crazy, so I try to stay away from it. Uh, it's, a, it's a funny little gastro thing we have going on here. Um, but I like coffee. I, all, all that is to say, I like coffee. And I'm sure I'm not unusual. I know there are other people out there that like coffee as well. And naturally, one of the first things I did when I started make, doing mixology stuff was I think, well, you can put like Irish cream into coffee. Can you put other stuff in a coffee? The answer is yes. You can put brandy in coffee. You can put whiskey in coffee. You can put various other types of cream liqueurs in coffees. You could put anything in coffee. Sometimes it's a good flavor. Sometimes it's a not so good flavor, but that's the whole point of this whole mixological thing that we have going on. It's about exploring. It's about trying new things. And coffee being a, a favorite flavor of mine was something that I wanted to try around with everything. Among some notable combinations that I like is the classic cream and coffee. There's orange and coffee, or coffee and chocolate, that's lovely. Coffee and mints, which I, I think sometimes people go a little too ham on, so to speak, but otherwise it's just, it's just lovely. Anyway, coffee, cocktails is the point of tonight's episode. I just kind of went around and I just tried to find out a couple of new things. Like, I feel like I've ever, I've, everybody's heard of like an espresso martini before. It's a wonderful cocktail. I plan on making one of those first because I do have an espresso machine over here that I got for like $15 at a thrift sale. Um, but there's like, there's gotta be other things out there as well, both for the, for the people who are into alcohol out there and for the people who aren't into alcohol. For, I know at least a couple people in my life who they're not really alcohol centric people. As it turns out, most of those non-alcoholic centric type people also are not very coffee like people. So I don't exactly know who I'm helping here aside from myself, but there's a vast array of people out there who I'm sure fit that particular demographic. So we'll get there. I went through a couple of different, a uh, couple of different books of mine, and we'll just kind of, we'll just kind of explore where things go. And um, that's my elevator pitch that has lasted about eight minutes. So you're welcome, and thanks for sitting through that. So the first cocktail that we're going to cover on today's today's cocktail bar stream is the espresso martini. It's a classic. It's super duper delicious. The first time I made an espresso martini, I, I found a recipe online, and it wasn't. It was I think slightly different than just the idea of putting vodka and espresso together. There was a couple other modifications to that, and I went to the local cafe and I got fresh espresso. I had it fresh from one of those big big machines that. I had grown accustomed to seeing in coffee shops, and I thought if I'm gonna have espresso in my espresso martini, I'm not gonna sub it out with coffee, I'm gonna get the good stuff. So I walked a good 20 minutes away to go get my espresso, and then 20 minutes back to utilize that espresso in a cocktail. Granted, it was 20 minutes later, it was very cold outside, it was probably during like late fall, around this time of the year, uh, two years ago, I think. So by the time I got back, it was pretty, pretty small. It was a very, very small amount of coffee, of espresso, and it was kind of cold. Anderson, Anderson, Anderson 11 maybe? My favorite espresso martini, equal parts, cognac, I love that idea, espresso, coffee liqueur, a splash of demerara syrup, and then expressed lemon peel over the top to finish. Sounds perfect, I love the idea there. The whole adding the citrus to it, I'm very, very familiar with like orange and coffee flavors together. I actually, a friend of mine just bought for me that Mr. Black liqueur um, coffee orange Amaro one, which I hope to pull out during tonight's stream because I really, really want to try it in a cocktail. Um, but putting the lemon peel over the top sounds wonderful. That and demerara syrup. I've never actually tried demerara syrup before. I've always wanted to, so I actually, I went to the store actually, and I finally got myself some demerara syrup. I have, uh, sorry, sugar. I haven't made it into syrup yet because uh, I just haven't had the need to create demerara syrup yet. But, um, cause like I tend to keep my syrups in my refrigerator for long periods of time and then it get a little weird. I'm very bad at making small, just enough quantities of syrup. Although today we did pretty good with some simple syrup. 
In any case, onward to the espresso martini. The hardest part, at least for this, I suppose, is to create espresso, and it's a whole process. So allow me to go down here real quick. I have the espresso machine hidden beneath the view. It's this guy. It's like a Mr. Coffee espresso machine, um, and I bought it from a thrift store. Uh, not a thrift store, I'm sorry, not a thrift store. I bought it from some garage sale once upon a time. I went back home and there was a bunch of things happening. Uh, one of those was a townwide garage sale. And I saw this interesting looking device. Um, I'd never seen like a household espresso machine before. I, I thought they were supposed to look like those big like, I, I can't be the only person that thinks like espresso machines kind of look like cars in the way that they're styled. They almost look like really retro cars. And that was my like, you know, that's what I imagine espresso machines look like, but this one was apparently not. And it's, I think it's a Mr. Coffee brand something or other, and it makes espresso. It's a little slow to do so, and it's a little misleading. Like you kind of have to, I think I have it off right now. I have it off. I almost turned it on. What you need to do for this thing, is you need to unknob the top, put a bunch of water in it, let the water heat up, it starts to build up pressure, and then you eventually put you like put like grounds and stuff on the other side. Um, this may take a little bit because I'm doing this from a different angle than I usually do, and I've never actually made espresso live. Oh no, no, I have, I have made espresso live on stream before. That was months ago though. On, uh, I I will be the first to admit that I am not necessarily a pro at any of this. So there may be times where I slip up, but please have patience, and there will definitely be something with alcohol in it by the end of I'm sure the next twenty or so minutes. So obviously the first thing you need to do when you're trying to make espresso is you need you need bean. You need some sort of bean, some sort of ground to put into your uh, your coffee contraption. Now. I've had the debate back and forth with my, mostly my mother, who's, I mentioned before, a coffee drinker, about what exactly espresso is. You can go to the store and you can buy espresso beans, but what, what exactly does that mean? It really doesn't mean anything. I suppose if you had to assign a meaning to it, you could say that a bag that says espresso bean is a bean that has been specifically optimized to be used in espresso. And espresso really is just high pressure coffee. It utilizes a particular pressure differential, which I'm sure there's a specific number out there for like the perfect espresso. And it pushes that water at that pressure through very, very fine ground coffee, uh, coffee grounds. Um, and then what comes out the other side is something that's, it's, it's obviously like coffee, but it's got a lot more or, for lack of a better term, a lot more character to it. It rips out more of the oils, it rips out more of the flavor. It's a lot more, not necessarily bitter, but a lot more powerful of a flavor than regular coffee would be because of that, like, I guess the pressure just like ripping all the characteristics from the bean grounds. The ground that you use, um, specifically one that's a lot more fine, helps in that process because if you think about, let's say, a ball pit, right? If you imagine that your coffee grounds are too small, dare I say just the beans themselves, you can imagine it like a ball pit. If I'm supposed to dump a bunch of water into a ball pit, it's probably going to fall right to the bottom. I can increase the pressure on the hose, but all I'm going to do is probably throw a bunch of balls everywhere, and in this case a bunch of beans, and just make a total mess. Now with espresso, you can imagine those balls in a ball pit being much, much smaller instead of a ball pit, let's say it's a rock pit. It's a bunch of gravel. If you were to try to take water and pour it onto gravel that's really, really densely packed, it's gonna take a little while to seep all the way to the bottom, which in this case would be the bottom of your coffee cup, which would be your espresso out the other side. Um, However, if you increase the pressure on your hose, what's, what, what's gonna wind up happening is if that pressure is big enough, it's gonna shoot water all the way through that gravel, probably taking a bit of sediment with it as well. And I think that is probably a proper analogy for explaining espresso. Essentially, imagine it like a gravel pit as opposed to a ball pit. Doesn't matter what kind of water you use or what kind of coffee beans you use, doesn't matter what, whether you use marble gravel, doesn't matter whether you use clay gravel. If you use gravel, as opposed to balls, you know, like ball pits or like as large boulders, you are going to have something out the other side that is significantly mur more murky because a lot more material is dragged with it because of the pressure of that water, except in this case it's not gravel, it is espresso bean. Lesson over. Let's make some, let's make some bean. I also have a coffee grinder here. I don't know what brand it is. It is also a Mr. Coffee Grinder. Are they both Mr. Mr. Coffees? Is there not a Mrs. Coffee or a Miss Coffee? I can't read this guy. What does this guy say on the front? I think I read this before. It says Mr. Coffee. Ah, I see. Look at that. 
We're a Mr. Coffee family here, apparently, except for the Keurig. Shun the Keurig. I'm only using the Keurig for hot water if I need it otherwise, because uh, I don't have a stovetop boiler yet, and the stove is downstairs, and I just don't feel like going back up and down the stairs. So essentially what we need to do is, in the whole gravel analogy that we've just uh, trudged our way through, we're gonna need some gravel. We don't want any balls in our ball pit. We want gravel in our ball pit because we're trying to make, we're trying to get some murky water out the other side. It's breath of water, super murky, potent bean water. So what I'm gonna do on my coffee grinder here is there's a couple of different settings. Uh, I want the fine setting, which is over at the top. And honestly, I'm not good at measuring things out, so I'm just gonna leave it at the eight cups mark and just fill it up about halfway, because I'm sure we'll need some coffee more later on. Now, if you're making like drip coffee or other different types of coffee, different types of coffee gel well with different types of coarse ground beans. Espresso works really, really well with fine ground coffee. If you were to do, let's say, a French press, you want something that's a little more medium ground so you don't get a bunch of sediment outside of the other side of the filter. And um, I, don't, I don't quite know if there is an optimized coffee method that specifically wants very, very coarse ground coffee. If there is a particular technique of coffee out there that does well with the coarse stuff, I wanna know. Cause, cause I just, I just can't think of off the top of my head. I suppose just a regular drip coffee machine works well for that, but I'm not so sure. I, uh, I haven't done much experimentation in this realm, so how it have it be? I have various different types of coffees over here. I'm not gonna bother going through each one of them. I'm just gonna pick one that's in the bottle, which is this guy, which is, I believe, the pink one. And the pink one is called. This is coffee that my fiance got for me from Guatemala, and I'm very happy that I get to pull it out on stream. I didn't drink all of it already. This is apparently regional black cat mix uh, coffee bean. It says acatenango at the top, of, the top of it. And supposedly it's aroma, uh, oh, this is all in Spanish. I'm gonna try my best. I probably cannot translate properly. Regional black cat, aroma fragante, acidez marcado, cuerpo balanceado, un post gusto limpio y persiste, pers persistente. I'm gonna guess that means something along the lines of a very fragrant aroma, less acidic. I don't know what cuerpo balanceado is, something balanced, I suppose. Un post gusto limpio y persiste. Maybe that's like low in fat or something like that. I'm not really sure where I'm getting the, the limp part from, um, but it's very, very tasty. I use various, I use a lot of coffee in this house for the most part. I used to use a lot of coffee at work. Naturally, when you work in an establishment that provides coffee more or less free for you, you tend to find yourself utilizing and, and consuming a lot of coffee. I, I'm lucky enough to have a coffee machine at my workplace that also does espresso, which is very, very, it's very, very advantageous to me. I'm a big, big, big fan of it. Quan Bui says, wow, your background looks amazing. Is it hand drawing? So this week was actually something quite special. I usually do a decal on this side. I usually do a decal on this side, but there's a bunch of different coffee beans that were drawn behind me, which was actually wonderfully drawn by a friend that came over over the weekend. There was actually a surprise party for me over the course of the weekend. Um, and it was really, really cool. Uh, I was surprised by everybody. And before the party actually happened, I was being taught how to draw these beans using a crosshatch style. I didn't actually draw any of them myself. But yes, it is all hand drawn. It's, uh, I find that I really, really like drawing. And over the course of my lifetime, I've kind of gone away from drawing quite a bit just because the world the world does that to you sometimes. But you got to remember where your passions lie. And I do like to draw. And I like to talk. So I get to do both of them. And I also like to drink coffee. So it's the perfect fix there. I appreciate the compliment, by the way, Kwan. I very much appreciate it. Disney's Queen pops in and says, it's Guatemala, of course. It's in Spanish. Yes which is why I tried to pronounce it in Spanish, which I don't speak very well, so I, I had to try my best. And so that's all I got. That's the only thing that I can promise on these streams. Well, I can promise a couple things. I can promise that I am who I say I am, because I think I'm a relatively honest individual. I can promise that we will be making cocktails because there is a lot of alcohol back here and if we didn't use any of it then that just seems silly um i can promise coffee it's literally right in front of us and i can also mostly promise that we will just try our best here because that's, that's the only thing we can do just try our best anyway interestingly enough i just realized i took the beans from the bag and not the beans from the container that i grabbed <laughs> interesting black cat coffee beans from guatemala um i don't know how loud this is gonna get because uh, I'm about to grind some coffee beans up here to a very fine consistency. So, if coffee grinding sounds are totally your thing, please keep your ears open and your mind open as well. Uh, if coffee, if loud coffee sounds are not your thing, cover your ears and I'll like, I'll wave at the camera when it's okay. Here we go in three, two, one, coffee grind. How does the music sound? I can't hear it. You guys can, though. This coffee.
coffee grinder is very convenient. You just hold down on the button, and then when it's done, it just stops whirring. Now, the thing that I don't like about it is the fact that in order to get the coffee grinding, I have to push my finger down on top of it, which is my finger pushing towards the spinning sharp element on the inside. I have a distrust towards this machine. I don't, it hasn't hurt me yet, but I don't really like the industrial design of it. It's wonderful, it's compact. I bought it for cheap at Target, but it worries me. I am prone to accidents, so pray for me. <laughs> if, pray, if you're a spiritual individual, pray for me. Otherwise, eh, I'm not hurt yet. I think we'll be okay. Anyways, coffee is ground. It's all fine now. The next thing that we need to do in order to create coffee... Er, whoa, we didn't make coffee. We need to put some water into it. To make espresso, what we need to do is we need to take the coffee grounds, which in this case are very, very fine, and place it into a container that will be able to hold those coffee grounds uh, properly. This is... I don't know what the proper term for it is, um, but I'm gonna call it the little espresso cup. Has very, very tiny holes at the bottom, which I would like to showcase here as we zoom in a little bit. The tiny, tiny holes are what kind of allow us to build up all that pressure there uh, in the espresso machine. Essentially, we're gonna pack a bunch of coffee into the middle of this here. We're gonna pack it all the way down as best as we possibly can. I don't have the right tool for that, but we're gonna try our best. And essentially, the water is going to come out and like percolate at the bottom here because there's a bunch of little holes here. Now, I have a, a lot of friends who drink coffee, a lot of friends who make their own espresso as well, and it seems that there are various different upgrades that you could do on your espresso machine to get like the perfect perfect shot of espresso. Um, various different techniques are out there. I only know of a couple of them, but one of them is to try to get as even a percolation, if I'm using the right term, as possible at the bottom of this. If you imagine that each individual hole is going to be an orifice that water, can, water and espresso can come out of, we want each of those pores to be able to exude that beautiful dark liquid at the same rate at about the same time. And it's kind of cool. I don't I don't really know if I'm going to be able to get the proper camera angle for this, but essentially when espresso is made like just right, it's cool to kind of watch the surface tension of the espresso like it almost looks like there's a bubble on the ceiling of this thing here that like like goes down like pinholes downwards into like a little stalag uh, type that kind of drips down into the cup down below. It's very, very cool looking. You can actually see like a color grading in between like the tans and browns of the espresso because there's different parts of the espresso. The crema is more the white part. It's a little bit more on air. And then there's the other part, the body or something that is the rest of the espresso. It's a whole, I can't even begin to pretend that I know enough information about this. I would love to do more research on it or to take a class on it, but you know, and there's only so much time in the world, and i got to spend my time on other things. In any case, so what I'll do is, I'm going to open up my coffee grinder thing, where all my fine coffee is, and flip it around, and I'm just going to put as much of this into here as possible. Now, what you intend to do is you want to have, in that gravel, gravel analogy, you want to pack as much of that gravel into your swimming pool with holes at the bottom in this analogy, as possible. So what you kind of do is you can try to take like a bulldozer. You can go over top of it. You can pat it down with one of those industrial machines and stuff to try to get as even a surface on top and as densely packed on the bottom as possible. Now, I, actually, I take that back. It doesn't need to be as densely packed as possible. Sometimes, if it's too densely packed, that whole evenness of the percolation kind of gets dialed back a bit. There is a whole spectrum of, I guess, bad to good techniques of various different parts of the espresso co the, the espresso process and um, again I can't even begin to pretend that I know any amount of info on that that is sufficient for a proper proper cup of espresso but there are competitions on it and people get paid to do it very very well um, hence the barista and the fact that that is an entire career choice for a lot of people um, so yeah there's that I need a spoon a heavy spoon I will take my very finely ground coffee bits, and there's a, there's a couple in here that aren't super finely ground, so I'm just gonna try to skip those for the purposes of this example. I have little, I have little measure measure marks on the inside of this, and one is labeled two, and one is labeled four. I'm under the impression that perhaps that corresponds to the amount of, I guess, the number of shots of espresso that you can expect to make with a pellet of this size. Um, It'll look like, uh, the whole term pellet will make sense after the espresso is made. These coffee grounds tend to stick together afterwards. Um, I'm just gonna fill it up to max. I don't really know what I'm doing here. I just want espresso. And you know what? If I got a little bit extra, well, I work from home tomorrow, and that'll be good for Cameron. So essentially, all I'm doing right now is I'm trying to get it as even as possible up to that line, um, and then I'm gonna put it back onto this apparatus. You know, technically what I could be doing, actually, I'm gonna do this in the meantime. 
probably should be doing that. Can I place this down without making a mess? Maybe. I just remembered, I actually need water. I need water in the espresso machine. I need the pressure to build. So what I'm going to do is, I don't know, I have to put the, I guess this is a bit of a, this is a downside of this machine. What I would want to do is I want to put water into the machine and have it heat up. I want the pressure to build as I am creating, as I'm like building up the grounds for the espresso, for the espresso itself. I'm not super fast at that. There I see we're at the half hour mark and we still haven't made a cocktail yet. That's okay. We're patient here. But with this one, in order to actually get the temperature rising, what you have to do is you have to turn the thing on and it will actually start like pushing out the liquid a little too quickly. So if I don't have the coffee grounds in there, it's kind of going to spray really hot water everywhere. I don't want to do that because I really like my bar whose name has still not been determined. Um, and I don't want to make a mess, especially not a hot mess, which <laughs> I can't clean up because it's a hot mess. So I'm going to pack this espresso stuff a little more quickly. I'm going to get it all even, and I'm going to try to pat it down. I'm going to try to get it as secure and, I guess, even in there as possible. So I have a little muddler stick back here. It's not perfect, but I'm just going to kind of very lightly tap on this. Um, it'd be cool if I could perfectly get the corners, but I'm not going to have that luxury here. And I'm going to try to get it so that it's as densely packed as possible without going too crazy on it. The idea is for it to be balanced or level at the top of this, and um, I think there's... There might be like a trick where like if you can poke your finger into it, it's it's good enough, but I'm not even gonna try that because I don't really want skin flavored coffee, let alone skin oil flavor. There's enough oil that comes with the beads actually. Um, so yeah, I'd show it to you, but um, if I did show it to you, I would dump all the coffee grounds out and then it'd be a very, very unhappy time. Anyways, that's all done. So there is a particular, there's a method, my madness. There's a set of slots in here that I can place the espresso bowl i suppose into and i'm gonna try to get it just right there we go i got it just right i will lock that on get it all nice and tight uh, i don't know what the latch is supposed to do i might have done that wrong but alas whatever and then i have this little catching cup over here that i'm going to place beneath and this will be the uh apparatus that i will get my espresso from so what i will do is as the espresso is kind of forming over here, we're gonna get, let me move this off to the side a little bit so I get a little more space. We're gonna make, we're gonna prepare the rest of the cocktail. If it takes a little bit, that's all right. But like the main star of the show is naturally the espresso. So, the star of the show, espresso, so, we move on. The, um, if it comes out last, that's totally okay. This is, a, the espresso martini is a shaken drink, and although there are many different ways to make an espresso martini, what I've got here is, oh, Anderson, 11, welcome to the party. I, in honor of your arrival, am going to, with, with your permission, that is, write your name on one of these beans, because I think, we're, if we're, we're all good beans here, I suppose. I think that feels quite right over here. Um, Let's go for that. But like, actually, let me put water in the thing first. I'm, I'm spending so much time on this stuff. I have a cup that I can use for pouring of the water. So uh, I'm going to do that. Got a spare cup over here. Let's do that. I'm going to put... There is absolutely no way to measure how much water I have in this thing. So I'm going to just I'm gonna just go for it. I should probably use a funnel so I don't spill everywhere. I am indeed a good bean. This is good. This is good. Even if you were a bad bean, like, there's no shame in that. Like, we're all bad people sometimes. We're humans. We have free will. <laughs> it's within our right to be bad a little sometimes. Um, I'm trying to think of the last time I was bad. When was the last time I was bad? I didn't clean up after myself after a cocktail stream. I cleaned it up on Friday. Ooh. Bad bean, Cameron. I can be a bad bean sometimes. Yeah, there's nothing in here indicating how full this thing is. Um, I can see... Can I see the water? I can see the water up at the top. So it looked like two old-fashioned glasses full of water. That that feels good. I'm, I'm okay with that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually turn the thing on. So let's take our knob, screw it on tightly, just like, just like this. Give it a good... I want this to be as tight as possible. This can be as, den as, dently, as densely taut as possible because if there's a break in the seal there, then steam goes everywhere speaking of steam there's a little i don't know if you can see there's a little attachment on this side where you can actually push out actual steam you can actually steam milk or so you can steam milk you can steam different things or i guess you can steam your coffee i suppose um but yes so let me turn this thing on for me it's i turn the knob closest to myself and it is in brew mode we're gonna get that brewing in the meantime welcome 
to the bar, Anderson. You are a good bean today. Is that above? Can we see that? I will put on this bean. Ander. Ander. Five on 11. Five on 11 sounds like it would be a very, very interesting meter. My younger brother, who is not only a barista and also an excellent musician, would know a lot about those very interesting polyrhythms, if it is in fact a reference to such. Um, they're a bit of a musical family, so I tend to comment on those kinds of things. I think, I don't know of any really, really good songs and really odd meters. Um, Jacob Collier does a lot of really, really good stuff, although I can't think of a, a favorite. Anderson 11 was taken, RIP. Oh, I, I feel that, I feel that. I think, I had noticed the other day, there's somebody, I don't know who it was, but I saw somebody on the interwebs the other day who, they had a name and everything was perfect about it except for what, oh no, 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 it was a streamer that I watch. Um, and their name used to be, or maybe it used to be, the O's were all capital O's, and then I just realized recently one of them is a zero, and I don't know whether it was always like that, or whether they had to change it for some reason. I don't really know, I don't really know. I don't need this spoon anymore. I'm putting it away. I need a recipe. Let's go for it. My espresso martini recipe, which I got from somebody who goes by Dick Bradsell. I don't have, usually I have links here, but this was a part of my recipe collection since before I really started keeping my tabs on everything. So Dick Bradsell, if you are out there somewhere, thank you for your espresso martini recipe. I'm going to recreate it here today and channel the power of the Bradsell or the Dick, whichever side you prefer. The espresso martini, the recipe that I'm using, utilizes a half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of simple syrup, which I happen to have, half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of coffee liqueur, probably gonna use Mr. Black, it's a classic, two ounces or about 60 milliliters of vodka, and two shots of espresso. Specifically here it says two shot, two shot of espresso. Um, I don't really know how to measure out, oh, does it actually say on here, shots of it, oh my gosh, it actually says what measure espresso is. I don't know if I spoke proper English there. That's okay. We're at least we're at least we're communicating. If I have to communicate with signs, I can. They're not good signs. It's not sign language, but I can make hand gestures. Coffee. I think this is coffee. I think this is coffee in American sign language. I think that's coffee. That's about all I got. Uh, Anna and I used to be learning that once upon a time, and uh, we kind of fell out of it. But that's okay. Okay, espresso martini. Let's get ourselves a shaking glass. I got a shaking glass right over here. It comes in two parts, naturally. I am gonna add the ice last because it's cold and I wanna keep it cold. First we need, ooh, it's actually starting to make the espresso. Oh my goodness, I better move quickly. This is, this is going great. Um, anyway, half an ounce of simple syrup. I have my simple syrup over here and I have a measuring majigger. Let's do a half an ounce of it before we get to the two shot. I'm just gonna let that fill up as much as I can because uh, it'd be nice to have a little extra espresso. Two ounces, oh, whoa. Pfft. Two ounces, one over itself, half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of your simple syrup if you prepared it ahead of time. Otherwise, I feel like you can just use, I feel like you can just use, um, mm, what is it? Mm, I'm, I'm brain farting. Hey, Larix, how are you doing? Interpretive dance is communication. Correct, I agree with that. Um, this, is my <laughs> this is my coffee dance. This is my bean dance. Maybe, I don't know. Um, that's going all right. We'll take, we'll take for that, we'll take for that. Um, by the way, everybody, Larix, who just popped that in, out in chat here, is also a Twitch tender in this community here. I was watching his stream the other day and he was utilizing this particular spirit known as Jennifer. I'd never heard of it before that stream, so I learned a thing or two on his streams, and I'm always very ap appreciative of it. I wanna try to do that thing where I can like, where I can like shout out people. I'm gonna do that, because peeps deserve it. Larix. Laricina, because it pops up like, I hope I did this correctly. Did I do it? I did it, I did it. I've never done that before back here. Cheers, my friends, to the fellow Twitch tenders out there. If y'all are into cocktails, there's apparently like a bit of a community of all of us, which I think I discovered, or actually my fiance discovered for me like a month and a half ago, and it's just so lovely. Anyway, did you come here for cocktails? That's what we're continuing with. I also need half an ounce or 15 milliliters of coffee liqueur. I have two. I have a normal Mr. Black, and I have a Mr. Black Amaro. I kind of already know what the, the espresso martini tastes like, so I'm really curious to see what this Amaro variation tastes like with the proper combination, so we'll go for it. Isn't Jennifer Jim's pre predecessor? I don't know! Let's Google it. We can Google for that. Jennifer, Geneva. I'm gonna pour this thing, because my Google is being a little slow. 
Jennifer is apparently a drink. Thanks, Google. Also known as Hollands, Jennifer Genevieve Paquette, or sometimes as Dutch gin, is the juniper flavored traditional liqueur in the Netherlands, Belgium, and adjoining areas in northern France and northwestern Germany. Thank you, Google. Or actually, that was from Wikipedia. Thanks, dude. Appreciate that. Nick Sinox says, hi from IAEM conference, b-boy, whatever, cat, region. Hello there. Hi there. Oh my god, I hope that conference is going well for you guys. Uh, for for, for uh, context there, um, my youngest brother, aka the b-boy, is off at a conference right now. He is... Could you chill out over there? I'm trying to have an endearing moment with my family here. Gee whiz it goes. Um... Anyway, he's out at a conference. He's studying emergency management now. To be honest, I can't properly define that. So, go get him, buddy. <laughs> Keep on going out there. You have all of my love and support, and I cannot wait to see you soon because I believe I have a birthday coming up, and I believe I will see them for my birthday. I think I'm going to stop this thing before it gets too far. Off, please. Off, please. No more. No more, please. You can stop now. You, that's enough espresso. Thank you very much. I don't know if it's good espresso, but it's espresso nonetheless. What else do we need in there? We also need two ounces. I believe it's two ounces of vodka. I got vodka over here. Where's my vodka? Which one am I gonna use? I'm gonna go classic today. I got I got Tito's. Tito's is Tito's is a good vodka. My father's favorite vodka. Go figure. We keep spirits within the family around here. I need two ounces of that, or about 60 milliliters of that stuff. So let's go for it. Do -do 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 -do. Two ounces, or about 60 milliliters. Of vodka and then lo and behold we need two shots of espresso so 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 espresso bean dance it's all about coffee here that's what this dance means next time you go to the coffee shop do this to your barista and they'll be like excuse me sir and or madam can i get you something and you'll be like give me a hot cup of bean juice make it pressurized and they'll be like an americano coming up I feel like this person doesn't need any more caffeination today. Anyways, I'm gonna wait till this pressure thing kind of goes. Now, probably one of the best ways to get the pressure out of this machine is to just let it off as steam, which I'm inclined to do. So I'm gonna be very, very careful about this. I'm gonna move the, nope, that's very, very hot. Just kidding, I'm not gonna touch it at all. Just kidding, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> that is very hot. Let's not do things dangerous around here. I'm just gonna get a spare cup. I have a spare coffee cup. So I'm just going to put that underneath it. I'm going to be very, very careful about it, or at least attempt to. Let's see. Can I skillfully remove this and do, like, Indiana Jones style? That is that is too tall. That is too tall of a cup. Just kidding. Do I have something smaller? Something smaller? I have this, I have this rocks glass. I think that'll work. Indiana Jones style. Here we go. I don't know any of the music from Indiana Jones, so I'm going to do James Bond. That was not difficult at all. Incredible. <laughs> I made such a big deal out of it. I don't need my measuring majigger anymore, because uh, we're measuring in shots now. Espresso shots. I have no idea what the metric conversion is for that. So let's Google it, because I'm trying... I, I used to completely distance myself from my cellular objects during the streams and stuff, but there's a whole wealth of information on the internet. Espresso shot in... Uh, milliliters? Yeah, that's what was a shot there. 30 milliliters is an espresso shot. Okay, 30 milliliters, or about a single ounce. So it's about two ounces of espresso. Larix has popped in and says, sorry, had to step away for a moment. Absolutely no problem. Jennifer and Jin, from what they've read, has have separate origins. It has to do with when the juniper is... Whoa, excuse me. When the juniper is added to the distillate in historic recipes, but... As always, we're not perfect books over here. We are not totally reputable sources on the internet, so we have to check it every once in a while, and that's okay. I'm sure there's there's probably a 50 plus page book out there that explains it a lot better than any of us can, but a little Cliff Notes version, which is what I think I'm mostly capable of, especially eight o'clock PM plus on Wednesday nights, is uh, perfectly acceptable. Okay, so I need two shots worth of express uh, espresso. It's espresso, it's not espresso. It's wrong if it's espresso. Or so they tell me. Um, if it's apparently 30 milliliters a pop, then I need two ounces or 60 milliliters of espresso. I'm gonna pour my espresso in here. Oh my God, whoa! I just used my metal jigger and just poured really, really hot bean juice into it. It's really hot, okay. I'm gonna place this down here. 
and fill it up the rest of the way to the two ounce mark and try not to spill any of this on any part of my body that I deem worthy to continue existing, which is all of it. Please excuse me as I very daintily move this two ounce espresso shot. Oh, my fingers are getting sweaty. Oh my god. Here we go. Carefully now. Carefully now. Two ounces. Two ounces. 60 milliliters of espresso. Ooh! Right in the glass. So good. There was absolutely no reason to be afraid. I am not a professional. So actually, please continue to be afraid. Please continue to worry for my safety. If your worry weren't there, I don't know. I don't know what else I would become. I'm just gonna put this back. Right, I guess this thing is just kind of done. So I'm gonna put that over there. I actually didn't. Okay, it got a single drop in, and I'm gonna clean that out, bartender style. I have this really oversized towel that I'm gonna use to see to clean a single drop from my thing here. Oh, I've made that mistake with the espresso shot. R.I.P. Your fingers. It was luckily only my thumb. Dare some would say the least important finger. And that small, small minority is wrong. Unless you don't have thumbs at all, in which case, if you never had them to begin with, then I guess it's technically the least important finger. But you didn't have them to begin with. Okay, so we have in our glass two ounces each of vodka and espresso, and a half an ounce each of this coffee liqueur. I used uh, Bister Black, Bitter Amaro, um, and the other stuff. Simple syrup. It's syrup that's simple. Probably created with a one-to-one -one ratio of water to sugar, quite simply. We're gonna shake things that's still very hot, very hot jigger, and um, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna shake things. I don't need the espresso anymore for what we're doing here this evening. I'm gonna keep the espresso around just in case we want a little sip of it. We can add it to other things. It's still coffee, so it still functions as coffee, and I'm gonna very, I'm gonna very, very carefully not touch it yet. I'll, I'll do it later. I've already got my fingers burnt at least once. I'm gonna go get some ice. I'm gonna put it in this thing. I usually do one large cube and a couple of tiny cubes because I, for some reason, suck at breaking up large cubes into smaller cubes. And uh, because I'm still learning, I'm going to take the same way out because uh, I have... Woo! I almost dropped that. One of the favorite things that I do is I make weird sound effects off the screen because uh, it's all I'm capable of doing when I'm not on camera. Just continue to make a fool of myself in, in the most wonderful ways possible. I'm currently adding two small cubes of ice. And try not to let it uh, move over. Try not to let it fall over on the floor. I'm not very efficient at ice cracking, ice creating, or ice procuring, so this is where we are at. Okay, let's shake it up. I'm gonna pour it in. Now remember, there was some pretty hot espresso in here, so hear that ice crack. Can we hear that? Hear a crack? Crack a little bit? No, I guess we missed it. That's okay. And we're gonna give it a shake. So let's go for it. Now naturally, since this is an espresso martini, we're going to pour this out into a martini glass. Now, what's really, really cool about espresso is I was kind of mentioning before it had like a sort of crema associated with it. There's going to be like a little layer of stuff on top of it that we can kind of, we can do a fun little garnish thing at. So we're going to go for that. Um, double strain. I need to double strain this. So I'm going to get one strainer. Nice. I'm going to move this away because it's dirty. And then I'm going to get another strainer, uh, specifically this one. I'm also going to get a sacrificial yoga block or two over here so we can prop this thing up for a lovely looking camera angle. Let's go for it. Here we go. Martini glass. Here we go. Whoa, I just clicked the record button on my camera. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> There's a small little clip of me staring at the camera awkwardly stored on that SD card. Let's give a zoom and see what happens. It gets bigger. Whoa, I had no idea that was going to happen. Just kidding. I knew. Where is my double strainer? Where's my other strainer? Oh, I never actually removed it. Double strain over the top and watch the magic happen. I hope I picked the right glass for this. This is lovely. It looks like I have more liquid in there than this martini glass can muster. So, uh, that's all we're getting there. Okie dokie. Now, whether it's because of the fact that the wide brim of the glass is up at the top, or whether it's because of some beautiful, beautiful chemistry magic happening, there is a sort of separation occurring here. It is, at least from my perspective, wider up on top than it is on the bottom. And what we can do with that is there's actually a bit of a density shift there. And because we love surface tension, we're going to take advantage of it. 
<laughs> please don't apply that to your relationships. I'm gonna take a couple of beans. This is from the coffee that I actually used to make this. We're just gonna place them up on top. I sincerely apologize that I can't give you a beautiful, beautiful shot up on top of these beans as I put them up on the top. Love the zoom feature. Thank you. It's something I've always wanted to do and I implemented it about a year ago with a really, really nice camera. It's a, uh, is it, is the juice worth the squeeze? Looks pretty damn good. So I'd say it was totally worth it. Now, again, I wish that I could show you a top angle, but I haven't quite figured out that thing yet. So you've seen enough of this brown gradient thing. Um, instead, what I'm going to do is try to be a little more interactive here. From my view, the best thing that I can possibly do is I can post the thing elsewhere. So for those who might wanna see this thing from my angle, I'm gonna take a quick pic of it. I'm just gonna post it on a Discord server. There's a link to it down below if you'd like to join. There's absolutely no pressure in doing so. This whole me posting a picture of the top of the drink on the Discord during the stream is something I just came up with. So um, I don't know if that's good process or not. I don't know. Maybe it's just a ploy to get you to join our community. I don't know. Are you a social creature? Do you like community and other like-minded people? Join our Discord. Or like join a local club. Go play sports or something. Do whatever you want to do. Go to a party. Stuff like that. In any case, I'm gonna put it in there because it just it just makes sense. There's a dr there's a drinks channel. That's where I'm gonna put it. Do, 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 do. There we go. I love instant transportation. And now there's absolutely no context for a recipe for that drink. I'll put it there later. I'll like edit the post or something. I don't really know. This is, ladies, gentlemen, those who fall in between or beyond those two points. This is an espresso martini. I'm gonna put my yoga blocks away. I don't need them. They've been sacrificed. It's beautiful. It is a very, very nice looking cocktail. It is so pretty. I think when I first saw a picture of an espresso martini, I was like, there's no way that it actually looks like that. It's like, it almost looks like it popped right out of like a magazine. And that's exactly what it looks like. And I don't, I haven't quite tested it, but I don't think you get the same differential of appearance there if you use just regular coffee. It's got to do with the particular characteristics of the espresso. Again, I might be pulling that out of my ass. I don't know, it's completely untested, but it looks pretty cool. And the best part is, it tastes pretty good too. Give it a taste. Oh, wow, it is so good. So, I'll back up a little bit and say, instead of using just regular coffee liqueur, I used Mr. Black's, because it was a birthday gift, Mr. Black's Bittersweet Australian Aperitif, which I believe has notes of, I think, orange and probably a variety of other things in it. What does it say? Does it say anything? It, it does not say. It does not say what it's supposed to taste like. But there is such a, there is such a sweetness there. It is insane how sweet an espresso martini tastes. Probably because you added, in this case, you added a half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of simple syrup. It really, really shines through. Anderson says, I have the rum rested Mr. Black. It is great and they're loving it. I remember the friend who got me this is somebody who I don't see them very often. They are an extremely, extremely generous person. And I was like, he was like, what do you want for your birthday? And I was like, well, I really like some, I really like some liquor to mix with. And he's like, do you have anything that you're really dying to get your hands on? I was like, okay. Please don't pressure yourself to buy this for me. But there are three, there is there's a liqueur out there called Mr. Black and they've got a dip, couple of different, they got a mezcal one, they got a barrel rum one, and they got the Amaro one. Please don't get it for me. It's a lot of money out of your thing. And he plops it right in front of me over the weekend. And he's just like, I make good money and I spend it on people I like. And I was like, oh my God. And that was great because that was the one that he got. And it was the only one available in the store. And it's the one that I really wanted. This is awesome. This is super duper tasty. I would say, usually, I think if you did perhaps a more professional espresso than I have here, you get a little more of that potency, that zing that I was referring to earlier when you have espresso. This espresso here, I was gonna say, doesn't have that zing. Let's put that to the test. I actually have the espresso here. Am I getting the espresso notes? Let me get a, a sniffy real quick. Get a quick, quick, quick sniffy. I like to try things. This espresso is super hot. Please don't break my glass. Please don't break my glass. Don't break my glass. It'd be really cool if you didn't break it. Oh, actually, if it's gonna break, I don't want it on my fingers. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Great, cool, excellent, thank you. I'm gonna put that back. See, I knew we might need the espresso again sometime. So, 
what does this espresso taste like? When I think of espresso, the flavor of espresso that I get is something that takes me back to, I used to work in one of the big towers here in Philadelphia, one of the, en uh, one of the en engineering floors up there, and they had this, they had a Nespresso machine. It's like espresso, but it has an N, N for Nancy in the beginning of it, and there was, like a dozen different espressos that you can make out of this machine and I tried all of them and every one of them had like this like mm, right in your face flavor that I loved it wasn't necessarily bitter sometimes it was sweet sometimes it was tart sometimes it was downright sour and I was like there's no way that coffee tastes like this but it did I wonder if this one has that characteristic it doesn't really smell super potent it's, it's been sitting for a hot minute so I'm not surprised yeah this one isn't really, it's not in your face. And it's probably because I got a little cheap machine over here. It got the job done. I probably didn't pack it densely enough. The, the grounds are probably really small. The method by which you make espresso, it's a whole entire art. And if you do it sideways, you do it a little differently than I guess, totally optimized. You get, get something that tastes different out the other side. Honestly, not my favorite espresso. That might have been a reflection of me as the barista in this case. It could have been the machines and tools that I was using, or it could have been the ingredients. It's very possible that this particular coffee bean that I used was not something that was, as I say, quote unquote, optimized for espresso. There's a pun, it's, it's a whole like, it's like, how do you know what types of wine that you like? Cool, you like a Cabernet Sauvignon? How do you know which Cabernet Sauvignon you like the best? You gotta go out and you gotta try them. How do you know which espresso bean or coffee bean in espresso form you like? You just gotta go and taste them all. And I'd never tried this at espresso before because it's, I don't know, espresso is just a little inconvenient to make with my current setup, so I don't usually do it very often. But espresso is still wonderful. And or coffee in general is just very wonderful. But this has a very distinct sweetness that I think is mostly tying back to that Mr. Black coffee liqueur that's in there. It's got a sweetness to it. It's got a bitterness to it. It's just good. Like, if if not for the fact that I can feel the alcohol in this, I would wonder what, I, I would think you probably used vodka in it because there's not a lot of characteristics coming from that base spirit. I could even see this going really, really well with like, I mean like a little bit of, a little bit, of, little bit of tequila. It's kind of like a, I'll say there's a little bit of, it, I don't want to call it funk. I don't want to call it smoke, but it's almost like, it's almost smoke. There's almost a smokiness to it. And that might be a reflection of the beans. It might be a quality of the beans showing through this that otherwise I wouldn't be getting. If that is from the espresso bean, or the coffee bean in this case, then I could probably add a tinge of like mezcal or tequila to that and it'll probably taste absolutely wonderful. Um, but this is my espresso martini and keeping with it. And I got to drink a little bit more of it so that I don't make a mess. Mm, tequila works. Cognac and brandy is decadent. Oh yeah, Anderson was saying that the cognac is uh, one of their fa the cognac edition is one of their favorite combinations, and that's something I actually have. I don't have any. I, it's, it's interesting. I've never had con cognac in my bar. I've never gone out of my way to go get cognac. I've only ever had various different types of brandies. It's the closest I've ever gotten to it. So um, I guess I gotta get out there and get myself some cognac and try it in an espresso martini because apparently it's totally worth it. I have to write that down. I gotta write that down somewhere. Yo, welcome to the bar there, Jera 845 GG. I'm gonna go with Jerry. Jerry GG. Jerry GG. Welcome to the Good Bean Club. You're a good bean now. I write good beans up on the board. Up on the, the Good Bean board. So thank you. Which bean shall you be? You'll be this bean. What a beautiful bean you are. Jera 845 GG. So easy to spell because it's right in front of me. It's wonderful that I have a screen right here. You can't see, but my. My set of my little screen is over here. It's hidden behind all the magic and stuff. It's the smoke and mirrors that you can't see that I'm totally using. That's how this show runs. Anyway, I'd like to take a step back for a moment to state that I have spent almost an hour on the espresso martini, and I don't think there is anything wrong with that. This is a magnificent drink. There are so many different iterations out there of how to make the espresso martini. If I can scroll back far enough, there was a recipe from Anderson that they shared that uses, I'm gonna find it in a second, equal parts, cognac, espresso, coffee liqueur, a splash of demerara syrup, and express some lemon peel over top. That's another way of making the espresso martini. That is more or less nothing like the recipe that I used here, but it's still an espresso martini. It's just such a versatile drink. And so far, I have never had a bad espresso martini. So I think it's worth the time that we spend on it. If you're looking for value, can't recommend Pierre Ferrand 1840 cognac enough. Writing it down. <laughs> I love recommendations. I'm totally into that. It's Pierre. 
he whoa i spelled pierre wrong it's okay pierre ferrand 1840 cog cognac brandy in case it's annoying that i write things down behind me for the sake of my own remembrance sorry i'm forgetful otherwise i just use post-it notes the recipe is great says anderson i'm pretty sure they got it from anders Eric erickson that makes sense actually i um i got an email the other day from curiata.com and it mentioned two very prominent bartenders out there and it was anders erickson and greg titian from how to drink and i was like hey it's the boys the boys are in my email it was so cool i don't remember what they were sharing i don't remember what the theme was i think it was rum and mezcal excellent excellent spirits in any case there are other things left to find. We just spent about an hour on an alcoholic cocktail. I think it's time to try something a little non-alcoholic for people who don't necessarily drink out there. I don't usually do mocktails and stuff, but that's mostly because I find it really, really difficult to find like totally worth worth it mocktail recipes to find. And if I, I don't know where my book is. Let me, let me, let me real quick see if I can find the book where I got this recipe from. It's somewhere on my table. Oh, there you are. I found it. I found this book in the thrift store. Dude, if you're trying to find recipe books, just go to a thrift store. There's there's so there's so many good ones in the stores and stuff. And this one is called Drinks Without Liquor by Jane Brandt. And it, I think it's a little dated. There's a lot of really, really interesting recipes in here that use like things like Worcestershire sauce and beef broth and excuse me, various different vegetable extracts. Um, it's it's weird for those who want to be a little, want to call it weird. It's very, very different for people who I guess I want to be a little more PC. There are some really, really interesting things in here. I would think that if you were like a real, real health nut, you might find some really interesting drinks in here that might kind of make you think a little bit differently. Um, in any case, I didn't really go that route. I, I didn't really go for something that had like vegetable juice and stuff in it. Um, so, what I found from here is, I went to the, the, the there's a, whew, words, I'm drinking alcohol, we stutter sometimes, I'm a very fast talker. One of the recipes that I found in this book was something called Asian iced coffee, and at first I was like, Asian iced coffee, like what part of Asia, where could it possibly be from? But alas, let's judge that by the ingredients that are within it. In order to create Asian iced coffee, according to Jane Brandt, I don't need a book, I have my recipe somewhere else. Bye Jane. Nice. Um, you use water, naturally, for the coffee. Cardamom seeds. Cardamom is a spice. I believe it's usually from India. I could be wrong about that. Uh, ground coffee, sugar, and pineapple cubes up on top. So I think the distinguishing characteristic here is you have coffee that is made with cardamom. There's no alcohol in this one. We're essentially just going to be making coffee with a little bit of a modification there because I kind of want to see what it tastes like. Larrick says, I'm here for the beef drinks. If I had, I actually saw the beef broth at the store today and I was like, one day, not today. But one day, Anderson also says a bizarre combination that they'd suggest is coffee and pineapple. Yo, this one calls for pineapple uh, chunks on top. It's not like in the drink, but anyways, pineapple. Uh, they made a competition cocktail using them together, and it was very, very eye-opening the way coffee and fruit work together. I think uh, in, at the point that I am in my journey, I felt that way about coffee and orange. I was like, there's no way that these two go well together, but alas, they totally did. For me, pineapple... Pineapple can, can be a bit sour, it can be a bit tart, and it kind of reminds me of like lemon, orange, a little bit of like mango and stuff in there, at least the way it hits me. Actually, more, more or less on the mango, more on like melon, um, but I can totally understand where that would come from. That's the thing. There's so many different coffee cocktails out there, uh, which is why I hope to be able to write some of these comp combos down um, to do this again sometime, because it's all about exploration and stuff. Pineapple and coffee. This is, this is what it's all about. Pineapple plus coffee. Do if there are any other like Go combos out there just drop them drop them here i'm gonna write them all down it'll be great L uh, Card L whoa larix also says cardamom is also used in turkish coffee so maybe asia minor or whatever antiquity designation they may have had that's possible it's very possible i forgot that asia minor was considered like a region i'm very very bad with geography so i learned a thing or two on these but let's go for it i have cardamom over here, I had to go to three different stores today to find cardamom because apparently a giant heirloom market doesn't have it. The giant supermarket itself does not have cardamom, but Whole Foods definitely does because Whole Foods is, it's Amazon. Why wouldn't they have cardamom? I'm going to very, very carefully move this espresso machine out of the way because I don't need it anymore. Please don't break. I will cry. I won't actually cry. I have a hard time crying. I'm working it out. Working it out with the people that I talk to. Cardamom, cardamom seeds. I have no idea what cardamom tastes like. I thought I had cardamom in this apartment, but I did not. There was not a cardamom or a cardadad, heyo, to be found. So I went to the store and I got some. I don't know what this tastes like. I don't know what it smells like. I'm gonna find out. 
pop that open. Cardamom smells like. Ooh. It's almost walnutty. It kind of smells like walnuts from back home. It's like I'm sticking my face into the ground in my parents' backyard. It's a very foresty area. It's very tree sappy. Is the first thing that comes to mind. It's very walnutty. It's very tree sappy. That's the way that it smells. It really does smell like walnut. That's crazy. If y'all have ever had black walnut or have ever seen like the green walnut things that fall from the top of the trees, there's a spirit that you can make out there called Nochino. I made a little bit of it like a while ago. It's excellent. It's wonderful. It's cinnamony. It's earthy. It's sappy. It's it's kind of, it's kind of like sipping a tree, but but in all the best ways. I assure you. Cardamom. It smells like it smells like walnuts, black walnuts specifically. Unless I don't really know what regular walnuts smell like. Can we? I don't need this thing. I don't know why they put those little, like, um, like those little, um, what do you call it? I don't know. It's got holes in it, and it goes on top of a jar. Why do you put holes in it? These things are not, they're not small enough to go through the holes. It just doesn't matter. Anyway, cardamom. I need that. We move on. So, in order to create the Asian iced coffee, at least the way that it's referred to in this particular book here, is we have to place water and cardamom seed into a medium saucepan and bring to a boil over high heat. As I mentioned before, I don't have a heating apparatus up here that is prepped for that sort of job, so I am going to cheat a little bit using the tools that we have. I don't think there was any shame in that. You work with what you have to create something that is more or less akin to what we're going for here. The way that I want to do this is essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to create um, cardamom tea coffee if that makes sense. What I plan on doing is because really all you're doing is you're adding cardamom taste here and a little bit of sugar to it, essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the cardamom, I'm gonna put it into a tea bag, and I'm going to brew coffee and allow the cardamom to steep in that coffee itself. I don't know if this is the best way to go about doing things. There are various different other setups out there. If your setup, at the very least, I feel like anybody's setup can create hot water, create coffee, and get, have some sort of apparatus that will allow whatever your, I guess, additive there to infuse into the coffee itself. That's essentially what it all is. So we're gonna go for that. I'm gonna grab myself a tiny glass, uh, which I am under the impression can withstand the heat of hot water from a Keurig machine. I also need to fill this thing up with water. So please allow me to do that. Essentially what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make a cup of coffee right here in front of y'all. It's very, very exciting. And um, I'm gonna add some cardamom to it. Almost like it were tea. It's not super duper difficult. Just because you make like cocktails, mocktails, whatever tales, doesn't mean that it has to be difficult. At the time, some of the best cocktails out there are super freaking simple. One of the simplest, simplest, wonderfulest recipes I know is the how to make a Negroni. It's Campari, sweet vermouth, and gin. Wondering what the combo is? Just mix them all equally together. It's so easy. And it's very, again, depending on what vermouth you use, you can use Campari or like Aperol or some other like bitter appetite out there. Depending on what gin you use, it can be completely different uh, than what you expect it to be. Um, here we go. I have a toddy glass. It's see-through. We're gonna watch it. I would say we're gonna watch it happen, but this is a very black background against a clear glass with a very dark liquid going inside of it. So I don't really think that there's anything worth watching here. So I'm gonna need, I have a little contraption piece that I gotta add in here. I'm just using water. I don't like to, well, actually, no, I take it back. I'm not gonna do it that way. I'm gonna use a custom K cup. It's like a regular K-cup, but I put whatever I want to in it, and it's uh, it's like, it's Keurig stuff. I bought it off of Amazon um, a long time ago, and I've been using the same one for a while. Probably not the pro way of doing it, but it's the way that I'm doing it. Essentially, all I'm doing is I have this little cup here that I can put coffee grounds into, and I'm gonna do that. The instructional part is over. If you're familiar with coffee, you probably know how this process works. Pour hot water over bean grounds. Allow bean-infused water to drip into... Uh, I guess infusion or drinking apparatus. If they are one and the same, it's a coffee cup. That's all it is. Nothing too complicated here. But it doesn't have to be complicated. I screw this thing back on carefully. Not really. I don't have to be careful about it. I just pop it in and then I close. Oh, turn on. Okay, I have to turn on open. Then close. Say that I want a cup of coffee. But before I say that I want a cup of coffee, I need to commit myself to what spice I'm using. I'm going to use caramel. I have some tea bags over here. They're not very good tea bags. I bought them from very cheap from Whole Foods and they kind of suck, but they're what I have access to. I'm gonna take, let's just say a spoonful of cardamom. The recipe here to create eight cups calls for eight table, I'm sorry, one teaspoon of cardamom seeds. So I guess you really don't need that much of it. So let's do a very shallow teaspoon, a really shallow, shallow spoon full of cardamom seeds. 
put that inside. Again, I said that the cardamom seeds tasted very walnuty, tasted very tree sappy in all the best ways. I mean, it's like oh, it's almost like smelling like a forest or like a druid's hut because I go to a lot of Renaissance fairs. Um, it smells like certain druid huts I've been in. Essentially, we're just gonna steep it like tea. So when you're ready, click the button, watch it roll. We made a very, very special coffee drink using espresso, and we also made something a little more accessible. That's what it's all about. Doesn't matter what your situation is. You can enjoy a nice food. You can enjoy nice, nice food too. And while that's going, I'm gonna enjoy my espresso martini a little bit. Oh, also should definitely be drinking water. Actually, let me drink my water first. And fill that up. Please make sure to stay hydrated, everybody. I, for one, am a little, for lack of a better term, tunnel vision of the brain so i often forget don't forget hydrate that was supposed to rhyme don't forget hydrogen i'm not going for it it's, it's just not working is that working sweet please don't spill please don't spill you're doing so great so far thank you good curate the curate does not have a name not many things on this setup have a name i want to name everything our freezer has a name though Go figure. We just ordered. We just started doing a different food delivery plan. It's biannually, and they fill up an entire freezer with meat. Um, we didn't have a lot of meat, so they delivered all the meat, and they provided us a freezer. And the freezer's name is Ruth, and it is sitting awkwardly in front of a washer and a dryer, some of the hottest parts of our basement. Is that energy efficient? No. But I didn't want to put it in front of the camera, so it had to go downstairs. It's all about saving money. And like, like, even if it's marginally, it's still okay. It's still okay. All right, so I have just made some coffee over here using the Keurig machine. I'm not being sponsored by Keurig. I don't want to be sponsored by Keurig. Keurig is cool, I guess. Essentially, all we have is we're taking normal coffee and we are adding some sort of spice to it. And I got to think, if this is how you make, let's say, Asian, ice, Asian coffee in this case, the way to make, I guess, other types of coffees is you can just take whatever you want and just put it in here. I've never tried this technique before. I don't necessarily expect it to work out perfectly, but if it's something that's really, 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 really good, really, really different, then this opens up an entire other world of possibilities with how to like create your own spiced coffee, I suppose. You could put cinnamon in there. You could put clove in there. You could put anything you want in there to change the characteristics of your coffee, which then begs the question, if you can infuse coffee this way, which we're gonna try and see if it works, do you need do you need all these like complex syrups and stuff that you can buy like off the shelf? Syrups are a bit expensive, they've got a lot of sugar in them. Can you can you do it without all the sugar and stuff? Maybe, possibly. Speaking of sugar, this particular recipe calls for sugar to taste. I'm a black coffee drinker, so I'm inclined to take it without any sort of sweetness, but I wanna add some sugar to it because that's what the recipe calls for. And because it's not something that I normally do, I wanna kind of broaden my horizons a little bit. So I'm gonna go get some sugar. The sugar that I have here is something that I've never actually tasted before. It is Demerara sugar. I feel like Demerara sugar is something that like like any, I guess, I suppose any respectable mix mixologist would have on hand because there's a lot of recipes that call for particular Demerara syrups or Demerara rums. Not saying that you're making your own Demerara rum, and if you are, awesome. Um, but Demerara syrup seems to pop up a lot in like particular recipes types such as like tea drinks and whatnot. And I've never, I've never had Demerara sugar to make Demerara syrup with. But I found it at the store the other day and I was like, well, I gotta have this. I have no idea how it's different than regular sugar, but that's the point. The point is to explore. The, the point is to try something new, broaden our horizons a little bit. Um, this is taped all the way to the bottom, so I'm not, I don't know if I'm doing this right. Please cut open for me. I'm gonna get in there. Stay safe, kiddos. Don't know why I'm calling you all kiddos. We are definitely all adults here. This is alcohol. Actually, this one is not alcohol. You could be a kiddo and drinking this. This one doesn't have any elks. That's okay. And if you are a kiddo, hi. I'm not that. I'm not that far away from kiddo. Although I'm the one using kiddo, so that kind of dates me a little bit. Anyway, Demerara sugar. Does it taste different than regular sugar? I don't know. I'm about to find out. It's very sweet. Kind of tastes like cotton candy. But there's something else to it. It's almost like molasses, but like not as astringent as molasses. I don't think, in the amount of sugar that I'm consuming here, I don't know if I'm getting the whole thing. There is something about it though. It's almost toffee-like. Like it's almost like toffee caramel flavor, but it hasn't been caramelized yet. 
I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm like off the ball with that or not. That's the impression I'm getting. Demerara, according to Larix, is made with evaporated cane juice, so it's not processed in the same way as granulated white sugar. I guess that does kind of make sense. It's a different process entirely, so I guess the, pro the process that comes out the other side will absolutely um, influence the way that it tastes on the other side. We learned new things today. Does it also have some sort of relation to, I think, the Demerara River? I think I remember reading somewhere that, like, Demerara sugar is specifically made from Demerara canes that are grown on the Demerara River or something like that. I don't know how far that chain goes, but I feel like I've heard of that at least once. Okay, so now that I've got my cardamom coffee kind of uh, going here, I'm gonna add a bit of sugar. Um, I don't really have a particular measurement of that. I'm just gonna do a, a spoonful of Demerara into my coffee cup, and that's all I'll do, because I, I don't wanna use all of this. Um, I need to, I need to make sure this doesn't like oxidize, so I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a little clothespin on top of it and see if that works. I'm gonna put that away. Whoa, don't step on your extension cord, Tanner. <laughs> at least try not to. Um, yeah, that was all, that's all I needed. It needed some sugar, sugar to taste, uh, ground coffee, cardamom seeds, water. That's all it is. I'm gonna mix it on up, and it also says to garnish with a pineapple wedge. I'm gonna get a pineapple chunk. I have some in my fridge. I've got them specifically for this cocktail. It's gonna take a little bit of effort to get out because it's a very, very packed fridge over here. Very, very packed fridge. Okay, don't fall, please. Don't fall. Thank you. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pineapple wedge, I'm gonna cut it down the side, and I'm gonna put it on the side of the glass. And then I'm gonna remove the cardamom bag from here because I don't think we need it anymore. There's my little, there's my little guy. Are they making this? Now we're good. Lag says it's supposed to be, yes, but don't know if that's protected in the same way champagne is. Yeah, I get that. For those who are uninitiated, if you are in France and you try to make champagne, it must be in the champagne region of France. But if you're like outside of the world, I guess you can, like there's California champagnes and stuff, but I don't necessarily think that you have to follow the same laws because we're not in the same country. If you're in America, bourbon has to be made a certain way because bourbon is, I think, American, if I'm quoting that correctly. If you're outside of the world, I guess there are various different ways that you can make your bourbon. I think the same sort of protections apply to tequila and stuff like that. It's a very interesting world out there when you realize that all this stuff kind of all comes from the same place. Pineapple, I need a pineapple wedge. Go put a pineapple wedge on the side. Try not to cut towards yourself. Try not to cut towards myself. I'm gonna put that on the side of the glass. Just right side there. Um, oh, don't fall. Thank you, thank you for not falling. Very much appreciate the uh, pineapple wedge. Appreciate that. And I'm gonna put, the, I'm gonna take my cardamom bag and I'm gonna put it away because I don't need it anymore. I have a conveniently placed bucket right to the side of my bar that I put all the trash into. This is not trash. If you are able to compost com uh, um, easily in your area or even with a little bit of effort, I would encourage composting. I haven't quite figured out how to compost in my area yet. So unfortunately, I just kind of take things and let them let them be to the trash gods. But as I get a little older, as I get a little more experienced, I'd like to kind of go down that um, sustainability path a little bit more. Because um, I think, you know, although it doesn't really help too much in the whole grand scheme of things, Actually, no, I take that back. It helps in the grand scheme of things, especially on the local level. And the local changes build up to something a little bit greater. At the very least, it's a mindset change. And if you can change the mind of yourself, you can change the mind of other people as well. And if you can change the mind of everybody, I guess you're a politician or some like famous person. Good for you. Don't let that power go to your head. It's dangerous. This is Asian coffee. It's a specific, this is Asian iced coffee. So should I have used, wait a minute. Set up a drip coffee pot with a measured amount of ground coffee. Pour the cardamom water over the coffee grounds. Sweeten the coffee to taste and allow it to cool. Oh, allow it to cool. I have to let this cool. I'm gonna put ice in this. This is Asian ice cup. Well, what does it taste like hot? Let's, let's try that actually. Asian coffee. I didn't name this. Somebody else did. It smells like pineapple. There's a pineapple wedge on it. Also smells like, ooh, actually I can smell the cardamom. It doesn't really taste, smell like sap anymore. I can really smell that coming out the coffee. I have a very, very... My my palate is very sensitive. I, it's not very good with hot things, so I don't tend to drink hot drinks a lot. I'm gonna try my best here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I forgot to mix in the sugar. <laughs> It's all sitting at the bottom. Excuse me for a moment. I'm gonna correct myself. I, I can taste the cardamom in there. There is, there's a certain bitterness 
of coffee that I really, really appreciate. I like coffee that exists in a more bitter, savory place. I don't really know how else to describe that. There's different locations in your mouth that supposedly, um, I guess, actuate those flavors, if I'm using the correct term there. Um, and I'm getting that. This particular coffee I know has that savoriness to it, uh, especially in regular coffee farm. Um, and I'm also getting that bitterness as well. But there's also a very floral, a very woodsy aspect to it. Almost like, it's like, it's like I don't know if it's accurate, but it's almost like I'm sitting in front of a fire and I'm catching like the whiffs and smell of the fire that's burning like wood is combining with the flavor of coffee. It's like I'm drinking coffee right in front of a campfire. Although I don't smell fire, really. I'm almost tasting the fire. I'm tasting the burning wood is the way that I would describe it. That's very pleasant. Wow. And the, and the, the, the added demerara sugar really kind of rounds it out. That's super pleasant. I wouldn't say like, like if your reason, for, for example, if your reason for not drinking coffee is the fact that it's really, really bitter, that bitterness is bam in your face. I would say this almost kind of dulls it down a little bit. It makes it a little bit more palatable. If you're more a, a tea drinker, if the tea is more your thing, especially like a, like a, like an oolong tea or I'm trying to think oolong or jasmine like oolong or jasmine then this is probably more up your alley it's just like it's not the same flavor but it reminds me a lot more it, it reminds me if 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 tea and coffee are on a spectrum and coffee's like way way over here this is inching a little bit like maybe a bit around here it's like it's it's definitely not tea it's certainly not tea it's definitely coffee but like there's something a little bit different there it's it's a scale Everything's a scale. Now, supposedly, this recipe calls... It's it's iced. So, there are various... Like, I was going to say, you could make iced coffee by throwing ice into coffee. There's a lot of different ways of creating iced coffee. For the most part, when I make my own iced coffees, and they're never usually that good, I throw ice into coffee. Mostly because I need the temperature a little uh, farther down. Not because it's a good iced coffee. You can take coffee, let it cool, put it in, like, a refrigerator and stuff. Not iced coffee per se, it's cool coffee. You can make cold brew and just add it with sugar and cream and stuff. That's essentially an iced coffee if you throw some ice into it. Um, the reason why that people don't usually just add ice to the coffee, like in order to create the iced coffee, I know you get iced coffees and there's ice in the coffee, that's obvious, but like what goes into that first? The coffee itself is either regular coffee, it could be double strength coffee, and I think it usually is because when you add ice to coffee, as the ice obviously melts, it waters down the drink, you get less of the coffee flavor and more of the sugar and syrupy stuff in there, which if that's your jam, awesome not really my jam although sometimes i do frequent being able to drink what i call those premium coffee beverages like from starbucks and duncan and various other coffee shops and i am a sucker for a nice premium coffee beverage which essentially means that it's not just coffee there's some sort of sweetener in there anyway i'm gonna take the simple man's way out i'm gonna add ice to my coffee to make it ice i don't need that many ice cubes i'm just gonna put two in there that's probably good i'll put two in there i'll stir it around a little bit because I think this, this glass is a little a little full anyways. I'll take that. Place that there. Whoop! And I will place this here as well. I'm getting kind of up to the top there. I'm going to give it a little stir with my spoon. I'm just trying to like... I don't want just the top of this to be cold. I want the entire thing to be cold. Because it's supposed to be iced coffee. And I probably should have done this a little bit earlier. Um, but for novices, you don't really think of those things. I'm not a professional iced coffee maker. I think ideally... Oh, I'll let this, this sit for a little bit, and I will muddle on what comes next. How will I do that? I'm going to get a couple of coasters. I'm starting to make a little bit of a mess over here, so let me go for that. I also need to, um, I don't think I'm doing another shake and drink next, so I technically don't need to clean out my glasses just yet, but I'll get there eventually. We go there, go there, I'll put the espresso martini over there, and I will place this on top of it within my field of view so I do not forget about it. Larrick says, got to freeze coffee in the, in the cube so you're not diluting it. Again, that is an excellent idea. I completely forgot about that method. That's another thing. If you want to get your coffee iced, why not make ice out of coffee? It's an, it's an amazing idea. It also looks really cool. I don't, this is not quite related, but once upon a time, I remember going to the store and buying, this is going to sound weird, black water. 
It was water, but it had some sort of mineral complex in it that turned the water black. And I, my thought at the time, it was like almost seven, seven, probably almost 10 years ago, probably. Um, and I was like, what happens if you freeze it? You get black ice? Can you create black ice by freezing black water? No, not quite at least. What'll wind up happening is whatever this mineral complex is in this water concentrates all towards the center. So all of the minerals in the center, in the center of the water and then the rest of it just becomes like clear ice on the outside. And if you, if you break the ice, you can get to the black ice core. And it's weird, it's, it's dry. It doesn't really have a flavor to it. It's just, it's weird. I think the, the, the water's name was BLK, it was black book water. And I, I don't think it tasted very good. I think it was like priding itself on being like pH balanced or something like that, like basic. It doesn't acidify your body. Um, any case, I'm gonna let that cool for a little bit. Actually, is it cold? Not quite cold to the touch yet. I wouldn't consider it iced coffee just yet. But we're gonna do something else in the interim. Now, in terms of various coffee cocktails out here, you have your coffee cocktails themselves, you have your coffee mocktails, if you will, your coffee variation, but there are also coffee shots out there. And I've always wanted to try a coffee liqueur shot. And there are many, but I found this one on the internet. I'm gonna go for that. It's called, I found it on TikTok, from somebody go, who goes by, I don't know what the person's name is, but I have a TikTok link there. It was recommended by a friend of mine. Activated charcoal, says Larix, because that's a problem. If so, it wasn't activated charcoal. It was like, there was at least a number in it, and it was something something mineral complex. Like, that was the label on the bottle. I don't think it was activated charcoal. It definitely wasn't, at, well, okay, unless this mineral complex is just like another name for activated charcoal then maybe it is but i don't think it was i don't think it was i'd have to i'd have to google it i don't like the uh, the whole activated charcoal stuff is i hear there's benefits to it but i don't i don't really know i haven't done my own research on it yet in any case well our coffee well our iced coffee over here is transforming into the iced variation it's evolving if you will or devolving depending on your perspective we're gonna make a coffee related shot over here it is called the duck fart shot if I remember correctly from the video I found it from, there are very, each state has a particular shot associated with it. And I don't remember what state this was from, um, but I'm gonna, but I'm gonna try it. Actually, well, I can Google this. I have the power of the internet, so I'm gonna go for that. I'm gonna do a little bit of Google searching. Duck fart shot, according to the internet, is... Usually I do my research for this before this, uh, before the stream, but, uh... The duck fart shot is a layered shot, naturally, and is supposed. It looks like it is the shot of Alaska, the Alaskan duck fart shot. I'm going to consume a duck shot. Duck shot. I'm gonna. Pfft. You know what I mean. I'm gonna consume a consume a duck fart. Delicious. Maybe I have no idea. Now this is a layered shot recipe. I am notoriously bad at layering shots, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. Hey, you got him. It requires coffee liqueur, cream liqueur, and whiskey. So I'm gonna go and grab that. I'm gonna use Mr. Black. It's been up here before. I want an authentic experience, so I'm gonna go for the original cold brew one. I also need cream liqueur. I don't have Irish cream specifically, but I have various different types of cream. And I'm gonna kind of more or less pick one at random, depending on how I feel. What do I think goes well with coffee? There is chocolate cream, there's cinnamon cream, there is chai. There's chai cream, chai latte, coffee latte. I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna use this tiny little nip I have of chai cream liqueur. Somrus is the brand, I believe. Um, I don't know how long it's been sitting in there for, so I'm gonna give it a little bit of a shake first. I'll use that. And then the, uh, the whiskey I'm gonna use, this one here suggests Crown Royal. I don't have a non-flavored Crown Royal, otherwise I'd just go straight for that. I'm just gonna go for a, a rye. I have a rye whiskey back here somewhere. Um, I just gotta go get it. Where are you? There you is. I see you. Somewhere hanging towards the back of my bottle collection. It's Old Forester. That's the whiskey that we got here today, it seems. Larrick says, huh, BLK water, black water, uses fulvic acid, which is apparently some of the same stuff that occurs in decomposing leaf matter. That sounds delicious. Based off of what I was describing before about like sucking the flavor from trees and stuff, and walnuts, which are nuts that have fall, usually fallen to the ground, that doesn't seem totally out of my wheelhouse. People, you know, people eat the weirdest things. I honestly would not be surprised. So we're gonna create a duck fart shot. You need to put coffee liqueur on the bottom, cream up on top, and then whiskey. I'm gonna give it my best shot. 
I'm going to grab myself a shot glass. I wonder if I have a tall shot glass. I don't think that I do, but let me check. If not, I'm just going to grab the best shot glass that I have. I don't have anything that's tall. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, well, this one's tall-ish. Hmm. I'm debating. I'm going to use a regular shot glass. I don't want to go too crazy. I have, I have a shot glass that is thin, but like it's not, it doesn't really contain space for a lot of liquid in it, it seems. This seems more like uh, the decomposing leaf matter stuff, more like the compost we were talking about earlier. Hmm. I don't remember it having a very particular flavor to it when drinking it, because I definitely drank this stuff too when I was trying it. But then again, this was many, many years ago before I guess my palate evolved, I suppose. I don't really know. So I'm going to try to do is I want to kind of picture this layering effect here. So I'm going to pull out my sacrificial yoga blocks. And I'm gonna put this shot glass on top of it. Is it gonna be perfect? No, because I don't. I, it's I can't adjust the height of the camera from this distance. Uh, but I can do this. I can just put some things on top of it. Let's see if we can make a good layered shot. I have no idea. Oh, can we? I love that little like centered action going on here. Put this here. What if I put something below it? <laughs> I put it on top of a glass that I had previously, and it was a terrible, terrible idea. I'm not doing that again. Do I have anything? I could put it on top of an orange, uh, but I don't, I don't want to use that. Hmm. I'm just go with this. This is what we have. This is what we're going to use. This is my shot glass. There we go. Put it in the middle because it looks cool. We are going to put... Um, I've already forgotten. No, I didn't. Coffee liqueur on the bottom. I'm going to put that on the bottom. It's not going to take too much effort. This is the easy part. The easy part is that first layer. A duck fart, everybody. A duck fart. How much do we need? Probably not that much. There's not a lot in here, so it's taking me a little bit longer. There we go. Go for it, go for it, and... That feels pretty good. That feels like enough coffee liqueur. Love that. Next, what we're gonna do, we're gonna put that chai liqueur up on top. You can use any cream liqueur. I think specifically, the Alaskan recipe calls for Irish Bailey's Irish cream. Um, I don't have any Bailey's Irish cream. Instead, I'm gonna use this chai cream liqueur because I think the chai is going to go wonderful with the flavor of the coffee. Usually what I do, or I guess what a lot of people do for their layering and stuff is they kind of put a little bar spoon here and they try to very, very carefully pour it across the top. Will it work? Maybe. Honestly, who knows? Here we go. A little bit on top. Let's see if it layers properly. Okay, it's actually falling towards the bottom. Interesting. So that's the thing here, right? So, funny thing about density. Density is a little different depending on what you're using. This tastes absolutely delicious. And I love it. Recipe book, question mark, says Larix. I have, I don't have a recipe book per se. I have a link down uh, for like different recipes that I've chosen to like kind of like broadcast out there. I put every, every recipe that I do on stream winds up going into the Discord server. And I'm like, I'm trying to technically, I'm a very technical person. So I'm trying to figure out technically the best way to host like a, a recipe book. And I could probably just use Google Sheets because I think I've seen, I've seen other Twitch tenders also use Google Sheets as well. It's a, it's a great idea. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. But if anybody wants to know what these recipes are, every single VOD that I post on YouTube has all of the recipes that I cover and timestamps as well, just to try to make it easier. Flowerson K says, oh, what is that beautiful emote? Jiboy hi, I love that, I love that. <laughs> Hi, I don't have like striped, like, I don't have striped sleeves and stuff. I love that. I apologize, I meant under the rest shot glass. Ooh, 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 ooh. What a great idea. I have a very large recipe. I have a very large recipe book. <laughs> That's what I have. What an excellent idea. I love crowdsourcing for me. This is the ultimate guide to spirits and cocktails by H. Fullman. What an excellent idea. I love the fact... So that's the beautiful thing about putting a bunch of people with not necessarily like minds together. Uh, we come up with some really cool things. Oh, so yeah. So the duck fart shot is supposed to have the coffee liqueur on the bottom. I didn't use Bailey's Irish cream. This... Whoa, don't spill. This chai cream liqueur that I have is... 13.5% alcohol by volume, and depending upon the sugar content in this particular shot, depends on exactly how it's going to lie in this layered structure. The only way to know for sure is you just like give it a try. Uh, honestly, I have a shooter's book that I use that supposedly tells you the correct order to layer things in, but it lies. 
and it lies often. So I don't, I don't necessarily believe any recipe book that I see when it comes to layered shots because I just gotta try it out myself. And I didn't try this one out myself ahead of time. So, but this is like a, if the duck fart is supposed to be brown on the bottom, then this duck farted already and um, it did not go so well. Anyway, there's also whiskey that goes up on top. I'm using rye whiskey. That one I do not think is gonna have a problem with the layering because it's high in alcohol. So it's gonna float. Float on top. There we go. That is working the way that I wanted to. Is it the correct color scheme? Absolutely not. Am I still gonna drink it? Absolutely, because I'm very curious of how that tastes together. I don't think I've had my rye whiskey. Actually, I haven't had the chai liqueur uh, in a, I think I haven't had it recently. I've had it in a cocktail before. I've definitely tried it before, but I haven't, you know, I haven't, I, I don't know what I used it in. Cause I only have a little nip of it. I, I bought, the, I think I got this as a gift from somebody and like, I didn't, I don't really know what to use chai liqueur for. So I haven't really used it for things. I kind of save it for some moments like this where I think that could be an interesting uh, swap out. And this is an interesting swap out. Larrick says, if the duck fart usually uses Kahlua, that's much sweeter than Mr. Black. So that would stay on the bottom theoretically. Oh, you know, this is also true. There's a lot of density dynamics going on here. And I do have a little bit of Kahlua, but I have, it's not like regular Kahlua. It's Kahlua Mudsly, which is a, it's a completely different, it's cream liqueur. And uh, I found that out the hard way. I tried to make a, um, a mind eraser, which is vodka, soda, and coffee liqueur. And soda itself is very, very acidic. So it will wind up, it'll wind up, um, what's the term? Curdling any sort of milky products beneath it, like cream and cream liqueur. So I got a very, very murky mind obliterator. Uh, sorry, my mind, my mind obliterator. Mind eraser, I think. Um, but I kind of strained it out like you would do with a clarified milk punch, and it, it wasn't that bad. Now, before I take this quasi duck fart shop, the fart duck shop, well, let's see. If it's supposed to be duck fart shop, sh duck fart shot, and I swapped around the shot and the fart, it's a duck shot fart. It's a duck shot fart. Before I take this duck shot fart, I'm gonna try what my Asian iced coffee tastes like. Not my name, somebody else's. It's got a pineapple on it. It's iced now, sorta. Of. Kinda lukewarm. I totally see why the, uh, the original um, mixologist decided to put pineapple on top of this. I think the juices of the pineapple have actually inched into the coffee itself. And it's a wonderful combination. The cardamom, and pineapple and the coffee, like, it goes really, really well together. This is a very, very pleasant drink. This is a wonderful way to quite literally spice up your coffee in the morning. And this is how we did it. You take coffee, you steep into it, you infuse into it like you would tea, cardamom seeds, and then you add a little bit of sugar to sweetness to it. It's very, very good. And then add ice or like use iced coffee cubes or whatever you use to ice your coffee. That's very tasty. I like that. That's very, very good. And it's so easy too. I think the tech, the technique of actually using like the spices and kind of steeping them in your coffee is not something that I've tried before. I never really thought of it before this evening, but that's kind of the really cool thing about just kind of like, I think taking another step back, the, I think the whole point of mixology is to just try new things and see what happens. The other day I had, I think I was drinking a, a Negroni, but I also had this chocolate porter in front of me and I was like, oh my God, what if, what if? So I combined the two together and I was blown away. I was like, wow, this tastes amazing. And then literally the next day, I saw somebody use bitter orange liqueur and um, chocolate, I think chocolate or coffee liqueur. The next day, and I was like, yo, that's a good combo. I just found that out yesterday. And they were like, cool, good for you. And I was like, yeah, acknowledgement. Anyway, to create a duck shot fart, attempt to layer on top of each other, some cream liqueur, Bailey's if you got it, um, some coffee liqueur, Kahlua if you've got it, and some whiskey. The recipe here calls for Crown Royal if you got it. I didn't have any of those, so I improvised. So I've got chai cream liqueur, Mr. Black coffee liqueur, and rye Old Forester whiskey. To the state of Alaska, may it forever be cold and eventually support my honeymoon, because that's where I plan on going for it. Ooh. That's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. Wow, my goodness. Ooh. The chai cream and the whiskey. That's a combo I wasn't expecting. My goodness. Okay, so it's actually not as 
copy forward as I was expecting it to be. The cream is super duper prevalent there. There is a sort of cinnamony spiciness to the chai cream liqueur that I used. And honestly, that pairs insanely well with the whiskey, which has its own spice coming from a completely different direction. I would say <clears throat> that rye whiskey spice is a lot more reminiscent of, of this is gonna sound like cliche, but it kind of reminds me of like oak barrel spices. And by that, I mean like vanilla or clove or other sort of spices in that category. And like, as soon as I was thinking of, my train of thought went whiskey, oak barrel, vanilla. And as soon as I thought that, the chai flavor not only exuded the cinnamon, but it also exuded vanilla as well. And it's just super duper pleasant. And I would say like, if you use like a really, like a good rye whiskey in this, it goes down very, very cleanly. I for one suffer from acid reflux. So sometimes these cocktails do some really, really crazy things to my esophagus and stuff. But this is very, very smooth. It's super duper pleasant. I think the smoothness probably helped. The cream liqueur definitely helps with that smoothness. I wanna give the coffee liqueur more credit here, but it's kind of lost on me. It's adding a touch of sweetness that's completely overpowered by the cream there. I don't think you necessarily need it, but if you're calling a shot, a duck fart shot, there has to be something that at least reminds you of a duck's colorectal system. So instead of Jägermeister, why not use coffee liqueur? Just kind of makes sense. Or at least that's where I'm coming from. I put my shot glass in my little uh, beautiful container over here. Uh, remember, if you, if you like mix drinks like this, you don't have to take the whole shot. You don't have to drink the whole drink, but no matter what, stay hydrated, so. I'm actually using, I'm going to shout out that friend of mine who got me the Mr. Black coffee liqueur. He also got these little dice, uh, old fashioned glasses. They're so cute looking. He got them from Amazon. It's so wonderful. Every single one of them rolls the same die. Every single one has a six and a three. I have two of them. So perhaps my sample size is too small and my conclusions are biased, but it's very cool looking. It makes it a little difficult to stir in, but yeah, you know. Why look a gift horse in the mouth, especially when the gift horse is, I guess, gifting. I guess, I guess that's the that's the analogy I'm trying to come up with. That's the that's the euphemism, I suppose. Excuse me. Please don't fault me for <laughs> for burping and stuff. It's what it's what happens. We we're drinking things around here. I'm not a perfect individual. <laughs> Nobody is. My body has to get it out of its system. In any case, um. Let's kind of let's kind of like do a little refresher. We're about halfway through the cocktail stream now. We've made three technical cocktails so far. There was a there was a coffee mocktail, technically a coffee variation, a coffee cocktail, and a coffee shot. And allow me to recollect those for you. The first thing that we made was an espresso martini, which my recipe called for a half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of simple syrup. I use a one to one ratio. It worked out perfectly. Um, one, about a half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of coffee liqueur. I used a Mr. Black uh, Bitter Amaro aperitif, a Australia, a, whoa, Australian aperitif. It was very, very tasty. It's it's an amazing, an espresso martini in all of its forms. There are so many recipes out there. Always come out wonderful. And you can always garnish it on top with the, with the little beans. It looks really cool. Um, very, very tasty, very, very good. The next thing we made was what, what one book calls Asian coffee. And what Asian coffee is, is essentially coffee with cardamom spice that has been infused into it. Essentially, all we did was we made coffee, we took a tea bag, filled it with uh, about, about like half a spoonful of cardamom seeds, let it sit in there, add a pineapple wedge on top, and a bit of demerara sugar for sweetness, and it's wonderful. It is, it is completely non-alcoholic, there is no alcohol in there at all, and it's just a very pleasant way to, for lack of a better, better term, spice up your coffee in the morning, afternoon, or 9.38 p.m. on a Wednesday night because obviously we're drinking coffee at the time and I'm gonna be wired for the rest of the evening, which is not completely unusual for a Wednesday because like these streams really, really hype me up. This is like, there are many highlights to my week uh, and they're Mondays and Wednesday nights at eight o'clock PM. Hey, oh, <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah, this is, this, I, I seriously enjoy this. That's why I keep coming back to it, so. And we also did a coffee shot. We did the shot of the state of Alaska here in the States, and it's called the duck fart shots, the duck fart shot, and it uses coffee liqueur on the bottom, Bailey's Irish cream on top, and then up on top of all that, um, some sort of uh, whiskey. Mine didn't come out exactly correctly because I did not use the recommended brand. So mine, instead of being a duck fart shot, came out to be a duck shot fart because the layers were just in the wrong order. And that's okay. 
It tasted beautiful, and I'm still recovering from it. <laughs> Excuse me. Anyways, I'm gonna fill up on my water, and we're going to move on to something a little bit different. I think what I'm gonna do is I am going to do another uh, alcoholic cocktail next, or, or another cocktail next, and then um, and then we'll see what happens afterwards. So this other recipe that I'm gonna do, this, this next recipe that we're getting ourselves into is one from, it came from a site called Rob Report. Rob, Rob Report, oh, the Rob Report. Duh, I'm reading that properly. It came from a site called the Rob Report on this food and drink section talking about Spanish coffee and a flaming rum Kahlua something mix there. Um, and essentially, it's a coffee cocktail that utilizes some overproof rum so that you can set this thing ablaze. Ah. But there is a twist. You use fresh coffee in it, and you also utilize a sugared rim so that the rim kind of gets a caramelized effect to it. And if you don't break your glass, that's a good thing. I don't think any of my glass or glasses are necessarily up for the challenge, but if it breaks on stream, we got it on camera, and that means it was all worth it because these kind of feel like it's okay. Bar antics are a thing. Like the other day I was recording a video with absinthe and I spilled it all over my bar. I made a total mess and I completely screwed up my keyboard for my surface. So I have no keyboard anymore, but that's just the cost of doing business. Also, the surface was kind of, the Microsoft Surface Go is actually kind of shitty anyway, and I would not recommend it to anybody. Anyway, Spanish coffee, how do we do it? Well, essentially we're going to combine overproof rum, triple sec, and orange liqueur, coffee liqueur, and some hot coffee together, and we put a little bit of cream in there. It doesn't say exactly how much, but we're gonna go for it. According to the directions that I have in front of me, which I ripped straight from the website, we have to moisten, moisten the rim of a glass with a citrus wedge or some water and dip it into a bowl of sugar to coat the top half, add rum and ignite. I just noticed it doesn't say, oh, it doesn't say anything about <laughs> mixing the ingredients in there. My, my assumption, this is my assumption. We have to combine all the ingredients including the overproof rum together then we fill up a cocktail glass then we put a float of the overproof rum up on top and then we light it ablaze that's that's my guess caramelize the sugar burn it for 60 to 90 seconds i'll turn the lights down it'll look really really cool once sugar is dark and candied add co oh, oh oh actually okay hold on no there's a there's a method to this madness here i'm glad i read the instructions as a, as a stereotypical male individual i tend not to read the instructions because i think i know what i'm doing I'm wrong and overconfident. Um, so essentially, you put the overproof rum in there first, you light it ablaze, and then, once the sugar is good, you add the coffee liqueur, hot coffee, and then top with cream. Interesting. I don't know how I'm gonna do that. Add rum and ignite. How am I gonna add the, I'm gonna try this. We're gonna go for it. I don't know how exactly I'm gonna get this thing to light on fire without the rum being on top, but I'm gonna give this a try and see what happens. And if we break a glass, it's okay, there's a fire extinguisher. It's, I was gonna say it's safely right outside, but it's not, it's actually far enough down the hall and that feels like a fire code hazard, but whatever, we're going for it. Fires are not, fires are serious. I apparently need a glass, so I have a glass. It looks like this picture utilizes a wine glass, so I'm gonna go for a wine glass here. So essentially what we need to do first is we need to moisten the rim with some sort of citrus apparatus. I have some oranges, I'm gonna go grab an orange. Actually, technically, it could be any citrus. Um, I have some, mm, I was gonna say lemon, lime. It doesn't say what kind to use. I'm gonna use limes. I have an, uh, no, actually, I'm gonna use lemon. I was gonna say, I would use the limes, but my fiance really, really wants limeade later, so I don't wanna waste any limes because I like to make stuff for her. I'm gonna use the lemon because the lemons are relatively the oldest fruit that I have right now. So that's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna create a wedge from this. Uh, how am I gonna do that? I'm gonna take this lemon, I'm gonna cut it down the center, and then I'm gonna cut it down the side to create a wedge. I didn't even get out my cutting board for this. I didn't need it. I'm so pro. He says way too overconfident in himself. Look, a lemon wedge. Um, but you know, before I actually utilize that thing, I should really get myself um, some sugar. I have a little bowl that I utilize. A little bowl over here. Um, be cautious, says Larys. I charred the heck out of a glass doing this. Good luck. Thank you, sir. I will attempt to utilize this luck to the best of my ability. Um, I need sugar. So I'm gonna sugar this rim. Sugar this rim? Let me give this glass a rim job. Anyway, I need sugar. Let me go get my sugar. 
I think I have a small little thing. I'm not gonna use my Demerara sugar. Um, I, I don't wanna say it's a waste. If you can like level up your cocktails, even bit by bit, it's totally worth it. But I wanna use my, I wanna use my Demerara sugar for something a little more, a little more, a little more, uh, for lack of a better term. So I'm just gonna kinda put some sugar on this little plate of mine. This is, this is the plate of mine. It's got some sugar on it. Um, and I'm just going to take this lemon wedge. I'm gonna coat the side of my glass by just kinda holding it here. Kinda going all the way around. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit on the inside too. I don't know, I don't know why. I just have a feeling. I got a feeling that I'm gonna rim the inside and the outside of my glass. And then essentially I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go into this bowl with the sugar and stuff. I'm just gonna kinda turn it around a little bit. I'm gonna try to coat the top of the glass in this sugar. Because I did a pretty wide, pretty wide berth of this uh, line, this pff, lemon juice, uh, I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go to the outside too, just try to see if I can get a nice thick layer of sugar on top. And I think we kind of did. It's pretty, it's pretty thick. It's a pretty thick rim there, ain't it? Nice. Um, the rest of the sugar is still good. I'm not gonna waste it. I'm gonna try to, as best as I can, put it back into this glass with the help of my friend, the funnel. Thank you, funnel. Appreciate it. Very good funnel. It's the fennel funnel! Just kidding. It's not the fennel funnel. I don't have fennel in the funnel. At least not yet. Excuse me as I check my... My phone was buzzing. Nothing important is happening. Wonderful. I got some work emails, but um, we are after... I would say we're after work hours, but we're technically not. I work with a team. It's actually really cool. I have the privilege of working with a team that part of us, over half of us, are on the other side of the world. So it's actually really cool. The work literally never stops, which doesn't sound healthy, but I assure you, we conduct ourselves in the healthiest of manners all the time, 24 hours a day. Non-stop. 365 days. No, we don't. It's not 365 days a year. We all have holidays. Some of us are religious. That's a wonderful thing. We get time off. It's great. Okay, so apparently what I need to do is I need to add an ounce of overproof rum to this, um, and I need to let it on fire, and then add my other constituents. Now, I'm a little nervous. I am not a very fast cocktail maker, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add all the ingredients to a tiny glass of mine, a shot glass or something, so that I am ready to not extinguish the flame, but just to like pour it in there. That's what I'm gonna try. Trying to keep, like, I've never done this. This is a, a total caution and warning here. I'm about, I'm gonna light something on fire. I have not practiced this. I have not done this before. There is a fire extinguisher outside, and I also have a vast amount of water here to be able to put things out. Fire is serious. Alcohol is serious. Please watch out. Don't hurt yourself. If you have loved ones, cherish them. It's a wonderful thing. And apparently there's some, I hear the sounds of a union forming in the distance. Oh, <laughs> they've been doing protests recently, specifically down by the art museum. So I would not be surprised in the least bit. I'm gonna get my overproof rum and we're gonna dive right in. As a, as a much more uh, experienced individual than I once said, fuck it, we'll do it live or something like that. Um, the overproof rum that I have and have been working with for pretty much the entire time I've been using overproof rum is this Gosling's 151. It was the only overproof rum that I could find at the time. If I could, I would find a Lemon Heart 151, mostly because I saw it mentioned on the internet. I'm a denizen of the internet. I take recommendations from the internet, but I couldn't find it, so I found this instead. Um, it's all right. It lights on fire. That's pretty cool. Essentially, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to add an ounce to it, so I'm going to take... I'll take this shaker from, I'll take this measurement jigger from before and add about an ounce to our glass. Here we go. Ounce of overproof rum. Overproof rum is essentially rum that has a lot more proof to it. Go figure. It's 151 proof, which means, mathematically speaking, it's 75.5% alcohol by volume. It is flammable. It can be dangerous. It can be quite delicious as well. Did I mention it's dangerous? Now, technically, if I wanted to go full ham on this, I also have Everclear beneath this bar. It's over here, hidden out of sight, so that nobody gets me in trouble. Um, it also lights on fire. And it's also wonderful for infusions, might I say. You can infuse any sort of alcohol and stuff. You, can use, you should use something that has a lot of proof in it, and then water it down afterwards, um, because it allows to... It's, a, it's an osmosis thing. It's a physics thing. 
with the more alcohol by volume, you can absorb more flavor, I guess, it's technically more aggressively. I guess depending on how long you keep things steeping in your liqueur, it doesn't really matter what strength of you use, but there's a lot more complex equations out there, probably multi-level differential equations that I just don't feel like doing the math on. I used to be in college, I'm not anymore. I don't get paid to, or I was gonna say, I don't get paid to do that math anymore. I wasn't being paid then either. Some would say I was being exploited. But like calculus is really cool, so that's fine, you know? <laughs> I have emergency services on speed dial for this fire. Oh my goodness, we're gonna go for it. I'm gonna put that to the side for now. It is dangerous. And I'm gonna get the other ingredients as well. I'm gonna combine that up just so, just so I can like quickly put it in there. Note, by putting more alcohol into the alcohol, it doesn't mean I'm going to ex extinguish the fire. That's not how that works. Although, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll try to get it. We'll try to get it working. Um, I also have I also have towels back here as well that I can I can use as a fire blanket. We'll see. We'll see. I'm getting more and more nervous as I think about it. I'm sure everything is going to be just fine. But we'll see. Famous last words. So what we also need is we need a quarter of an ounce or about seven milliliters of triple sec. I got a big old bottle of triple sec down here somewhere. I just got to go get it. It's a plastic bottle, so it's not. It's significantly less dangerous than fire. It's a big old bottle though, so I'm gonna go for that. I need about a quarter of an ounce, about seven milliliters of that. I'm gonna put that into an intermediary container. I had this, um, I had this little um, rocks glass that I was using before, so I'll go for it. Let's add that. We're adding a little bit of oranginess to this, about a quarter of an ounce. I actually overfilled that a little bit and spilled a little bit, so it actually kind of worked out. We're also gonna need one and a half ounces of coffee liqueur. I feel like, because we're already using an orange-based, uh, an orange-based liqueur, I'm also gonna go back to the, I'm gonna go back to the Mr. Black Amaro again, because I feel like it deserves the center stage. Although really, the glass that's on fire is gonna get the center stage here. Um, but we'll try our best here. We need about one and a half ounces or about 44 milliliters of whatever coffee liqueur that you use. You can use Kahlua. Kahlua is, I think, the, the common one here. Mr. Black is like, I guess, a level up. Um, I don't know where like Patron XO fits into this. I've never actually had it before. I'm sure it's wonderful. Patron makes excellent, excellent spirits. And we also need three ounces of hot coffee. Um, for that, I'm going to make some more hot coffee. Now, there's probably a need to make coffee a little more fresh. I still have some of my grounds left in this Keurig machine. I'm trying to be a little more, trying to be a little more uh, conscious of like waste and whatnot. And to be fair, I don't think that it's bad to use the same set of coffee grounds twice, especially not for this purpose. If I was serving this at like a restaurant and people were like paying for these drinks and whatnot, I'd make fresh coffee every single time because that just feels most appropriate. But like, I'm in my own house, I'm making my own cocktails. Nobody else is drinking these because Anna's not into coffee. So I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna do this. It'll, it'll accomplish the job. So I'm gonna go for that. I need a coffee mug. This one isn't a part of the show, so I'm just gonna do this again, and then I'm just gonna fill it up. Go for it. It is definitely going to be a bit weaker than the first time. Then again, I'm also using, I'm making it a, in a Keurig machine, so it's really not gonna be that, that good coffee anyway to the purists in the crowd, but it's okay. I'm openly acknowledging that this coffee is going to be rather subpar, and I'm okay with that. Either way, it will still be coffee. And I need three ounces of it hot. Um, hopefully, as it doesn't make a mess. That'd be great. All right. I essentially have all of my ingredients prepared. We're just gonna take all these and we're gonna put them in uh, after the sugar here gets like dark and caramelized in the room of this glass. So, what I plan on doing is I'm gonna move my ingredients to the side. Uh, the coffee is finishing, so I will let that finish. And I'm going to start preparing the stage, if you will. Here's a sacrificial yoga block. Here is a wine glass that has been coated with overproof uh, rum. Um, if something goes wrong, I have water on standby, I have uh, all this stuff, and there's a fire extinguisher outside, in which case the stream will end after that because we try to keep things, try to, I'm not trying to encourage bad behavior, but man, that'll be pretty cool. Okay, um, I think we're ready for this. The coffee has finished. Actually, I need three ounces of it, so let me measure that out into, I guess, a different glass. Here's a different glass. I need three ounces of hot coffee. I'm gonna use another metal jigger because what a great idea I have. What a wonderful idea I'm having. It's, this is not gonna pour very well. Carefully, oh, I can use the funnel. I can use Mr. Funnel. This is also not gonna work, bet. Ah. Should I be using this on a plastic funnel? I don't know. This is not working, actually this is working perfectly. 
This is working not the way I wanted it to, but it is still working nonetheless. Ah, hot coffee on my finger. Cool. Awesome. This is off to a wonderful start, it seems. Is it clear that I'm not a professional? Are any of us really professionals? If you are, raise your hand. I cannot see it. I also cannot fact check your credentials, so feel free to lie about it. I also need about another half an ounce of that. All right, yep, I made a small mess. It's okay. At least it wasn't on fire. I'd say that that is about three ounces of hot coffee. I can guarantee that it's hot because <laughs> it's hot. It's hot, dude. And I'm gonna take this coffee and put it off to the side. Um, there's a lot of spare coffee around here. Let's go for it. Let's do a little bit of a zoom. A little bit of a zoom. We're gonna get all up in this glasses grill because we want to see what happens on the show. I'm gonna go a little bit over here. Zoom in. Make sure this glass is all nice and coated. And we'll dim the lights a little bit. I have a torch somewhere. I do. Let's torch things up. Please be careful. Make sure that you have fire extinguishers on standby. I'm gonna turn the lights down and test out my butane torch. It's a little, it's a little funky. There we go. That's perfect. Let's go to the b upstairs lights. We'll go here. And we're gonna dim things down a little bit. We're gonna get it nice, nice and dark over here. At least we're gonna try to. It's a little bit darker now. A little bit darker now. A little bit darker now. Essentially, I'm gonna keep this thing on fire until the sugar looks like it's caramelizing. I have much better visibility than y'all do. I say that. Fire! Let's see if this works. Three, two, one. Ignition. There we go, it's on fire. Cool. Will it break? We'll see. Kind of caramelizing. Getting a little hot. Looks pretty good. My water is on standby. We're watching things. It's great. Looking pretty good so far. It's hot. I don't know if this glass is prepared for it, but we're trying for it. Starting to change color. A little bit. I can see it caramelizing. It is starting to drip. This is good so far. Wonderful. Now, I'm gonna pour, what goes first? Is it the coffee? We add, let it burn, coffee liqueur and hot coffee. There we go, coffee liqueur and hot coffee, here we go. It's a little fire, more coffee. Great, I'm blowing it out, cause I'm nervous. That was absolutely terrifying, but we did it. <laughs> Oh my god. All right, claps everybody. We did it. We absolutely did it. Do we need to garnish this? Oh, maybe we need to garnish it. Wait a minute. Do we need to garnish? Top with cream. Ah, we have the top with cream. There we go. I got a top with cream. I got some cream. Let me go get that cream. Oh, my heart's beating. That was wild. Good to know that the Baelic Winery has good wine glasses. That was exciting. Well done, thank you, thank you. Now this is supposed to, I'm gonna shake this up a little bit because I'm gonna sit for a hot minute. It's still good, I tested it. We're at a top of cream. It doesn't say how much cream, so let's do a little bit of cream. There we go. That's a little bit of cream. That's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It's supposed to use semi-whipped cream, so I shook it a little bit before stream. It's semi-whipped. I don't really know how you would tell the difference between semi-whipped and whipped cream, or semi-whipped and not so whipped cream. Is it a little chunkier? Maybe not. Excuse me. That was really exciting. I'm really, really happy when things don't absolutely die on stream. And so far, so far, I have not made any critical, critical mistakes on stream. Actually, I did break a glass once, but that's fine. That's okay. So what we have here was our Spanish coffee. Yeah, I got it from a, a website called Rob Report, and it's wonderful. It is, actually, I, I haven't tried it yet. It's not on fire, right? It is warm, but not on fire. I don't plan on putting this glass to my mouth just yet until it passes the finger test. It passes the finger test. Now, I can kind of see that the, the, the sugar, so like the flame mostly existed on the inside of the glass, not very much on the outside of the glass. So it really wasn't, it's not as, um, I guess it's not as caramelized as it could have been if I was able to get a denser collection of sugar on the inside of the rim, but I guess that kind of goes into the art of it all. I feel like another way that this could have been done is you take the sugar cubes and you coat it in rum first, 
Actually, maybe, hold on. Moisten the glass with the citrus with some water to grow a bowl of sugar. Top the top half, coat the top half of the glass with sugar. Add rum and ignite. It just says add rum. But I feel like if there was a way to moisten the sugar cube with the rum first, kind of like you would with a, an actual sugar cube, um, you can light that on fire, um, this would be probably a better way of going about doing it. But I didn't, I didn't think about that. Um, but that's okay. Otherwise, I feel like you get a, probably a, a safer flame because it's at the top of the glass as opposed to being inside of the glass. And you probably get some more caramelization. I don't really know. This was Spanish coffee. It's got overproof rum, triple sec, coffee liqueur, and hot coffee, and a bit of semi whipped cream up there. If you whip the cream more, it'll float on top of the coffee. This is floating a bit. Actually, I guess I, I kind of, I zoomed away. I zoomed away before uh, it started separating, and it actually did, it kind of did a little bit. Check that out. There is a bit of a nice foam up there. That's, that's kind of cool. Oh, let me get my white shirt out of the way. It is kind of floating. It's kind of beautiful. I take a quick picture of it. Very cool. Please continue enjoying the zoom up shot. And then, and then like, and then come back. There we go. Have we enjoyed it? Was it wonderful? I'm sure it was. I can't wait to see how this tastes. Ooh, this is lovely. I guess that does make sense. If it's a little more, if it's a little more whipped, then it makes sense that it would probably have a little better of a characteristic to it. Let's see this. I can like hear. This is worrying to me. I can hear the glass making sounds. I can hear this glass making sounds. That's actually kind of scary. Interesting. Well, if it breaks, it'll break not on top of my yoga block. This is interesting. Maybe that wasn't as safe as I thought it was. Things could still possibly fail. That glass is making sounds. Before it breaks, I'm gonna take a sip, or at least attempt to, very carefully. Whoa, that is powerful. Holy crap, wow. I was not expecting that. Quick, switch glasses. I'm a daredevil, I'm gonna keep it there. If it breaks, I want to know. Because so far, I'm a pattern recognition kind of guy. So I will learn for next time if it breaks. I do have another one of these glasses, and it wouldn't be the first one to break. So it's okay. We can we get these glasses on the cheap. There's thrift stores nearby. They're uh, disposable, per se. This is interesting. This is so... The rum is super prevalent. My god, it is so... It's so alcoholic. Like, I can really taste that there. But it's it's so sweet. It is really, really caramelly. It's like, there is only a particular side of the glass that has the really, really caramelized sugar, but it's almost like the whole drink has been caramelized a bit. This is delicious. And it's so warm too. Wow. There is like this heat emanating from the middle of the glass. I don't know. I don't think it's the glass because I can put my I can put my lips on it. I can put my tongue on it. It's totally fine. It's totally safe to the touch. But I can hear it making like these little these little sounds. And I'm starting to realize maybe it's not the glass making sounds. I bet it's the sugar crystals. Kind of like ice cracking in a hot drink. I think it might be the sugar crystals doing something. That's the only thing I can think of. Or maybe it's the cream. I, I don't really know what's going on. Maybe there's like tiny little activation sites where there are tiny little bubbles forming. I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm spitballing here. Something science-y. This is really, really cool. I mean, it's cool in the sense that I don't think my glass is going to break after this. If the glass does break, then it was cool. It was cool. Um, but it's no longer cool anymore. But as I continue taking sips of this, it's still, it's still great. Okay. Let me break that down a little bit more. It's got an incredibly, it's got an alcoholic aroma to it. This is very, very spirit forward. The coffee, the coffee Amaro, the Mr. Black Amaro is shining through. There is a coffee bitterness here. There is a, a citrusy bitterness there. And I think it's accentuated by the triple sec. I think that was an actually a wonderful combination to have there. This is different than any sort of coffee cocktail that I've had. The coffee, despite the fact that there's four and a half ounces of coffee-based 
like li like liquid in there, it's not super duper coffee forward. The rum is actually very, very forward. It's very, the molassesy, sugary taste is probably coming from the sugar. It's probably coming from the torch sugar that became caramelized. And, and like the cream does a really good job of kind of softening it. It's almost like when I stick my, when I, when I take a sip of this, it's almost like the first thing that I'm greeted with is this very, very palatable sweetness. It's, it's cream, it's almost buttery in a way. And then right after, it's the whoo, it's the rum. It's almost like the, the overproof rum is rising up to the top, which it probably is, because that's kind of how density works. Larix says, it's kind of like creme brulee and cracked sugar top. Yeah, wow. That's, that's what it reminded me of. It reminds me a lot of, oh my gosh, I love creme brulee. Every time I go to a restaurant that has creme brulee on the menu, I get creme brulee. I love the taste of creme brulee. There's just something satisfying about like cracking the top of it and going in for the custard beneath. I wouldn't say that it's super creme brulee-y, but in the sense that there is a little bit of a, um, because I don't know exactly what they use to make creme brulee. I think they might use like something like an alcohol on top to be able to flame it, but it does feel very creme brulee-y, but not not as custard forward. I feel like if you were to add perhaps, well, I wonder if you if you incorporate the cream a little bit more, I'm gonna try that. If I incorporate the cream a bit, I wonder if it's a little more creme brulee bit because that's, that's what I'm thinking. I'll kind of agitate that for a little bit. See if that changes it up a little bit. Mm. Yeah, a little bit. It's, it's not too different than it was previously. It's a little it's a little softer now, I would say. A little more It's not even buttery really. It's still a little bit creamy. It's like it's almost like um like a latte. Like a very, very dulled down latte. That's really, really good. But it does remind me it does remind me considerably of creme brulee. That's a very good analogy there. But I'm not quite getting the full like my synapses are not connecting creme brulee to the Spanish coffee specifically. But everyone's taste is different, so it very well might. I feel like to somebody else, it probably does draw that connection. It's very, very good. It's very, very good. And the glass is not completely broken. I don't want to like. I don't want to manhandle this glass too much because I fear for it. It's like it's it's like a, like a baby that has to be cherished. It's a beautiful cocktail too. That was really, really good. And it also put on a show. We like that kind of stuff. We like putting on shows. Um, this is wonderful. Um, okay. So the next thing that we're gonna do, because we have a lot, we've got a lot of alcohol here, and I'm, I'm feeling it, is I'm gonna I'm gonna sober up a little bit by drinking some water over here, kind of evening out everything that's going on in my body, and I'm gonna make a, another coffee variation mocktail. This time, specializing in the flavor of apples. R.S. Cal says coffee heart. That's my mother. I love my mother. When my mother pops on. When my family pops on, we celebrate. <laughs> I'm on. I love you. Thank you for supporting everything that we do over here. It's wonderful, and we appreciate family. My mother's a very, very good mother. Still is. And so we appreciate it. If your mother is sh shitty, I'm so sorry for you. If you don't have a mother, that's either good or bad. There's a lot of contexts. Appreciate your mother. Mother's Day is coming up, probably, at some point. Anyway, we move on. We appreciate mothers around here. I'm going to get a coaster for this guy. Put it off to the side. It's a beautiful cocktail. It's very spirit-forward. I personally don't think I need too much more alcohol this evening, so I'm gonna put it off to the side and let it sit in its in its royalty uh, as it will continue to do and not throw my other drinks off the bar. I'm gonna take a sip of, I'm gonna try to sober up by drinking some non-alcoholic coffee beverage. The Asian coffee, very, it's very nice. The pineapple is like, the, the, the pineapple is like seeping into the, in the, into the coffee. I really taste that. And it's sweet, a little tropical, tropical? It's a very vague way of describing it. It's pineapple-y. It's pineapple-y and it's chewy because of the cardamom in it. It's a very, very good combo. Let me um, take a look at what the next thing we have to do is. We don't have to do anything. We're, we're spitballing here. It's basic, it's, this is basically improv. Uh, the next recipe that I have prepared though is also from that book that inspired the Asian iced coffee and it's just called apple coffee. Essentially, all it is is you take coffee you combine it with apple juice, you put a few orange slices in it, add some cinnamon sticks, allspice, cloves, and whatnot. Again, this coffee variation here, it's not a cocktail, there's no alcohol in this one, utilizes, I would call this more coffee variation. And you would usually want to create this in a saucepan. You would want to probably put some water into a, water into a pot, combine your allspice, your cloves, your cinnamon sticks, your oranges, and your apple juice, and boil it, and then pour that over coffee. 
So in the sense that instead of, like, let's say, infusing, let's say, your oranges and your spices into your coffee, your coffee is the thing that is being infused into your spice water. That's the way that I think that you would usually do it. I think that's the original intent of the author here. However, I do not have a saucepan up here. It's downstairs, and I don't really feel like going down there. I do have a list. I, I do have a, um, a particular item that I'm looking out for a sale on, and it's like a, it's like a tabletop, like, it's like a tabletop burner, and I want to be able to, like, kind of mix these syrups and whatnot here live on stream to kind of, like, walk people through the process, because, like, there's a bunch of different variations that you can do with your syrups and tinctures and whatnot, too. And personally, I don't do a lot of time to explore this stuff on my own time unless there's a camera right in front of me. So, it's an excellent excuse to uh, spend money on the finer things, I suppose. In any case, we move on. Apple coffee is created by placing ingredients, all of the ingredients, into a saucepan, uh, and then putting, putting it all into a, a pitcher thermos. It says that you have to use hot, strong black coffee. So in this case, you're combining uh, coffee, apple juice, orange slices, cinnamon sticks, brown sugar, allspice, and cloves, all together, giving it a boil and straining it all out, and that's what you get off the other side. Our recipe is going to be a little bit of a bastardization. This is essentially what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the coffee that I already have, because I still all, I still have an entire cup of coffee over here that I just hadn't used yet. Is it as warm as it was before? No. Which means that the the whole infu the infusion process that I'm going to try to illustrate here is not going to be as extreme. It is still hot though, and it is still not. It's it's still too hot for my lips to handle. I'm going to test it actually. All right, it's, it's still warm, I would say. I think this would probably be useful. I, I think what I'll do is I'll pop it off with a little bit more water in my Keurig over here. It's got some coffee in it. Is it the best way to make coffee? No. Do I have a French press? Do I also have a Chemex so that I could use and to make better coffee? Absolutely. Um, I just don't feel like it, and that's okay. So I'm gonna fill this up with a little bit more coffee um, fresh, technically, and I'll gather the other ingredients. So what we do need is we need some apple juice. I'm not using apple juice either. I'm using apple cider. Some would say that there's a debate between the two. I think one just contains more pulp than the other, and personally, I'm a pulpy kind of guy. So I have apple juice. I have a little bit of apple juice left over from the weekend, and just in case I run out, I also have some more apple juice that I have as backup. Oop, excuse me, microphone. Next, we're gonna need some cinnamon sticks and oranges. I have an orange. Here's an orange, got my orange. I'm gonna put that front and center, right on top of this rocks glass. Hey, hi dearest. Oh, thank you, but I don't wanna, but I don't want the apple juice. You want it back? No. Catch! Nice! Catch. No, I don't want to, I take it back. Go. Stop, I don't want the apple juice, I don't want it. <laughs> no, stop this, this is, this is dangerous. I will drop it eventually. No, just kidding, I'm super good at catching things. Watch, I'm gonna catch it without even, fuck. <laughs> I guess to use the apple juice. <laughs> Take it back! Oh, I'm kidding, I'm not gonna throw it at you. That's disrespectful. You the TV. I probably would have hit the TV. I'm a little buzzed right now. Can you tell? I don't wanna hit the TV. I may be buzzed, but I'm not stupid. Every time that I say that I'm buzzed, please remind me to drink water because I might forget. Hydration. Anyways, I just made some more coffee. It is, whoa, that is pretty full. Oh, very full. I made some more coffee. I'm gonna need that coffee. I need my apple juice, I need cinnamon sticks, brown sugar, allspice, and cloves. Ground allspice, ground cloves. I think I have the ground allspice up here. Let's go check. I have clove, I have cinnamon sticks, do I have allspice? Where is the allspice? That's juniper, that's allspice, excellent. Now, technically speaking, I'm not doing this the same way that the recipe says it, so technically you can, use, you can use ground spices and whatnot, but I think the way that I'm doing this is I'm kind of infusing it into the coffee cup itself, so I don't really think it needs to be ground. If it's too finely ground, it's just gonna like seep through the tea bag that I'm using, so it's not gonna be more of infusion, it's gonna be more of just like a mixture, which is not really what I'm going for here. And I also need brown sugar, and I'm gonna use Demerara sugar because it is the brownest sugar that I have over here at my bar. Anyway, now that we have all that put together, um, let's grab our coffee cup. Supposedly what we need to do is we need to combine the apple juice and the black coffee evenly into a glass. I have a very, very full cup of coffee over here. I'm going to move it. 
the side. I'm gonna very carefully move on my bar. Very hot, hot coffee. Love hot coffee. Strong black coffee. That's what it says in the recipe, strong black coffee. And I'm going to put this into, um, I need some more space to work with. So just because I really haven't used it yet, I'm going to use my stirring apparatus. I'm gonna grab a stirring apparatus. This guy, it is a whole mess over here, by the way. Usually the bar is not this messy. Whatever, we're having a great time. I'm having a great time. Um, so we're gonna combine equal parts of the coffee and the apple juice into the container and we're just gonna kinda infuse it. So we're gonna see how that goes. And I'm just gonna do it completely haphazardly. And I think it's probably gonna taste pretty good. That's the whole beauty of it all. Like if you were waking up early in the morning and you're groggy, like you haven't quite dusted your eyes yet and you're like, Ugh, I don't want the normal coffee this morning. Then you could probably take anything in your spice cabinet throw it into a container and strain it out and that's it's spiced coffee it's something a little bit different combine it with your favorite juice it could be orange juice it could be apple juice apparently we're using apple juice because that's just what we have available and it's a wonderful thing or at least we think it'll be and that's what we're here to test so let's go for it i'm gonna combine equal parts of my apple juice and hot coffee together this recipe that i have here creates eight mugs so if I divide that in an eighth, it says to use about two ounces e or about four ounces each, four ounces each of apple juice and your hot strong coffee. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. Again, we've seen so far that me pouring coffee out of a coffee mug does not work that well. I'm not very good at it. So I'm gonna eyeball it. Or at least I'm gonna try to. There must be a better way, they say. There must be a better way. I'm sure there is. Um, here we go, coffee, coffee in my container. Don't break it. Sweet, that feels good. I don't know how many ounces that is. I would measure it, but I don't feel like it. Now I'm gonna take about, let's see, how, how, how thick is that? There's that much coffee in there. I'm gonna add that much apple juice, or at least I'm going to attempt to. And then I'm gonna add all the other, I think while this thing is sitting here, instead of adding the apple juice, I'm gonna add my other spices and whatnot. Um, so I'm gonna take another tea bag of mine over here i'm gonna open it up this is the poor man's way of um if you don't have a stove accessible if all you had access to is hot coffee a keurig machine this is how you can make it for yourself at home and i'm gonna add to it um it says a pinch of all of these different spices but i've got whole berries and stuff so i'm gonna add a scant hand of allspice to my tea bag I'll close that back up and put it away. I'm gonna do a scant handful of clove. I don't know why I still have this thing on there. I don't understand the point of having this on a spice rack. It doesn't really work. It's not for me at least. Scant handful of cloves. Add that to our tea bag as well. And to be fair, these tea bags can probably, this spice, it's not really a tea bag, it's a spice bag at this point. These spice bags can probably just be reused. There's a lot there's a lot of spice in this and i feel like not all of the goodness of the spice is used on a single cup of coffee this would probably be good for an entire pot of coffee if you just kind of scale it up a little bit maybe instead of a scant handful like a full handful and you could also be using a pot as well that'd probably be pretty good and i got some cinnamon sticks as well um for this particular thing for this particular ratio here it says to use one quarter of three inch cinnamon sticks so i actually just bought more cinnamon sticks today so i'm just gonna take three thin cinnamon sticks and i'm just gonna put them into the coffee i'm just gonna go like that and we also need some brown sugar so i'm gonna take my allspice take my cloves my tea bag put it into my coffee cup into my hot hot coffee i'm gonna let that infuse i'm gonna strain it all out so that there's no big mess at the other side we shall continue. We also need about, it says 10 milliliters of brown sugar. I'm gonna measure it out. I'm, 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 we have demerara sugar, it's brown. It's light brown. I hear my fiance yelling at me from the, from the sugar. And it is brown, you can look at it yourself. Like tan. Do you have brown sugar down there? Yeah. Oh, are you gonna bring me brown sugar? Brown. Okay. I don't know why it's brown. Sometimes my fiance likes to like, just like, without warning, spontaneously just like help out. And I appreciate it greatly. Please don't throw the brown sugar at me. Oh my God, that'd be terrible. That's not the same thing. This is, it may look brown, but this brown is- Brown sugar. Brown. It's, it's a, ba a bag that says light brown sugar. So I'm gonna use light brown sugar. You use actual brown sugar. I am being informed brown. that I must be using 
light brown sugar. So I'm gonna use light brown sugar. Just as the world intended me to. Thank you. you also thank you, thank you. Oh, never mind. Those no, they're sugar cubes. They're not they're quite, not quite brown sugar. Oh, got a twist tie stuck on my spoon. All right, I'm gonna take, it says I need, I adjusted this down so the app that I'm using is using doing a little bit of math. 10 milliliters of brown sugar. I don't really feel like measuring that out. That, I don't know exactly how to measure that out. So I'm gonna take half a spoonful and add it to my coffee cup. And I'll stir it around. I'll, I'll do it, it's a stirring glass, so I'm gonna stir it up. And that kind of works. And it will take your sugar back. I will give, I will give my dearest my sugar bag. Here you, oh, you spilled stuff on the floor. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That's why you have towels. Here, quick, a towel. Also, it's just on the carpet. So. It's on the carpet and there are wires beneath the carpet. Oh, should I wash the carpet? Well, I mean, eventually. Ooh. That was kind of my fault for leaving the shaker there. I just wasn't expecting to walk over it. Thank you, dearest. Bye. I love her so much. My goodness, I'm gonna marry that girl one day. Anyways. I need to fill this up with about four ounces or whatever the amount of coffee that I used of apple juice. I have this apple juice. I feel like this is going to be convenient to watch, so I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna show y'all how to apply apple juice to a cocktail. Watch and learn. It's very, very complicated. I'm zoom in a tad. I might need a second yoga block for this. I am definitely going to need a second yoga block for this. Let's zoom in there and I will get another yoga block. Yoga blocks are excellent risers. There we go. We're gonna add this much, this much apple juice. And actually I have chalk over here, so I'm gonna mark it under my board. I want, let's see, I want it about there. Let's do that. That's where I want it to be, just about there. I say as I walk right in front of it. I'm gonna take my apple juice. It is Simply Nature brand organic. I'm going to unsheath my straw, which doesn't seem to want to be working for me. Oh, it actually unsheathed from the other side. Incredible. I will clean that up later. We're gonna take our apple juice. Does it have to shake? Do we have to shake this? Do we have to shake well? It does not say shake well, so I'm not going to shake it. Pop the straw into the juice, and then quite simply, we're going to squeeze into the glass until we feel like that we're at the mark. Let's see, are we at the mark? Let's see until we're at the mark. Squeeze. This is how we apply apple juice. This is how the professionals do it, I guess. <laughs> this is how I used to do it in like middle school and stuff. Oh, I'm kind of making a mess. Let me tilt it a little farther over. This might actually be like just enough. Oh, look at that. It's totally working. I love it discovering new methods of making cocktails on stream. Just use apple juice from a container. I'd say that's perfect. There we go. Slightly drunk man who drinks water creates not so drunk coffee beverage. Well, now that we have it in here, it's in a stirring container, so we're gonna stir it. Uh, I don't have an ice cube in there. This one isn't supposed to be iced, so I'm just gonna kinda very carefully as best as I can, kind of just stir it around, try to get these ingredients incorporated with each other. That's actually working very well. The tea bag is my centering point. And I'll stir that around. For reference, if you're joining us a little bit late, we're creating what somebody calls, Jane Brandt specifically, apple coffee. It's equal parts hot coffee and apple juice, and we're infusing it with cinnamon sticks, allspice, and clove. Although, to be perfectly honest, Oh, there's also brown sugar in there as well. We don't, it doesn't necessarily need to be those spices. It can be whatever gels well with your particular palate. Um, I don't have a point of reference. So I'm gonna just keep going with what I got here. All right. Oh my God, that tastes so good so far. Wow, all right. I'll continue with it. I don't need that anymore. I'm gonna zoom out. This is, wow, this is really, really good. I'm gonna provide a full outline of my thoughts on the particular drink when we actually get to it. Um, now that we have it all prepared, we're gonna put it into a glass. I didn't actually use my apple cider. Let me put that away. Oh, I was supposed to add orange. Ooh. Real quick, I'm gonna add some orange slices. I, I completely forgot about that. That's okay. I sometimes forget. And that is okay. What we were supposed to do 
you're supposed to take some orange slices and put that in there as well so i'm gonna just take this take this orange and i think what we're going for with the infusion there is we're just trying to get a little bit of like the orange oils and stuff so i'm gonna take some take some of these orange slices just gonna kind of throw them inside there's gonna be a little bit of juice in there there's gonna be a bit of oil in there because i'm kind of cutting these things up all the little like cell units inside of the orange are kind of bursting as i kind of throw the knife in there i'm just gonna go for it i'm basically taking like a third of this orange i've kind of scaled down the recipe a little bit for my particular example and just put it inside it smells wonderful and i'll stir it a little i'll agitate it a little bit more just to see it's a little it's a little difficult to stir at this point i'm also using a regular spoon but anyway i'll let that sit for just as long as it takes for me to get a uh, strainer and we'll strain it into a cup and we'll see how it tastes i'll take this orange and i will put it to the side because i will probably reuse it again later oranges are Oranges are one of my favorite fruits to have on stream because after I'm done using it, I can just eat it afterwards. I don't really eat lemons. I know somebody who does. I don't eat limes. I know somebody who kind of does. Uh, I, but I do eat oranges. Eat oranges on the regular. Okay. Hydration. Um, let's put it into a glass. What kind of glass? I got a little... Got a little... I got this glass. Like, a, like an old-fashioned glass. It's pleasant. It's nice. It works well. And I think it'll be a good uh, a good container for this. Now, I think because I added so much, that, that, I guess the downside of not using the saucepan in this case is because is that it's not as hot as it was before. It's not really hot apple coffee. It's kind of dulled down a little bit. If you were making this like the way the original mixologist intended, you'd have this on a saucepan and you combine everything together while the water like comes to a boiling point. Not quite boiling. I don't think it needs to be boiling. Oh, it actually says boil over medium heat. Okay. And then you let it simmer for 10 minutes, so it's kind of boiling. Um, but I let it infuse this way. Technically speaking, because it's not as hot, it would take longer to infuse the way that it naturally would. But from my little scant tea si uh, um, spoon sip, I think it's really, really good. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rush ahead a little bit because it tastes really, really good so far, and I'm, I'm uh, a big fan of it. I'm going to take a strainer. I'm just going to kind of strain it into my glass over here. I don't actually have any apples here. But I feel like you would very wonderfully, um, you could, you could, I hate this strainer so much, my god. I feel like you could very wonderfully garnish this with a couple apple slices. I have a, I have an annoyance with this particular strainer, I'm not a big fan of it. It's one of the ones that I first used when I, before I started like, doing serious mixology stuff. Because the other one is still dirty. It's okay. It'll be okay. Move that off to the side because I don't need it anymore. This was what we created, was the apple coffee. It is non-alcoholic. There is no alcohol in this, and that is okay. This could be a wonderful way of starting your day or perhaps ending your day, kind of like what we're doing here, with a, an apple spiced coffee. Let's give it a taste. I'm going to smell first. It's very strongly scented of cinnamon and clove. I don't think the, the, the allspice is unfamiliar to me. I don't, I can't quite pick out the smell of allspice. I can sort of kind of take out, like, pick out the taste of allspice, but I'm not that good at it. I'm better, I'm more familiar with cinnamon and clove as spices, not so much the allspice. Um, but we all, we all got a journey to go through, and I'm still getting there. I actually, I was watching, I was browsing the internet the other day, and I saw somebody who was claiming to be a chef saying that if you're really trying to get the, uh, get to know your spices, what you can do is you can take that spice, and you can kind of take a little pinch full of it and tuck it in the back of your mouth between your gum and your teeth, kind of like you would with chewing tobacco, and keep it there for like 30 minutes or so. And he was saying like, oh, your brain will like unconsciously get to know the flavor and you'll be able to pick out the spices in the meals that you eat. I, I've, I, I'm a sucker. I, I, tried, I tried that the other day with paprika and uh, it stuck around. Paprika is a very interesting spice to have in your mouth for 30 minutes at a time, um, but it I guess it worked. I don't know. I it was like two days ago, so I don't think I've had any have any. Excuse me. I don't think I've had any paprika heavy dishes to be able to pick out the flavor, at least knowingly. Anyways, quick tip from the internet, I guess. Apple coffee. Kind of tastes like a very very diluted apple pie. It's pleasant. I feel like it would be a lot better if this were a lot hotter. 
um, which is the way that it was supposed to be made. It would be really, really good. It's very, it's very, it's apple cinnamon forward. If you were to imagine, actually, actually, this is the impression I'm getting. Starbucks currently has an apple, I think it's like an apple crunch or an apple pie latte or something like that, that actually one of my coworkers uh, took, we went out to Starbucks together because I really needed to try it. And this tastes almost exactly like that. It's, it's like, I guess they have like an apple pie syrup or whatever over there. And this tastes really, really similar to that. If you added cream to this, which I could do, and I might do just for the purposes of trying it, it might actually take almost a taste almost exactly like that latte. I do have the cream and I still have it here. So let me, we're basically just making a frappuccino. <laughs> we're just making a frappuccino basically. Not a frappuccino, a latte. Except instead of milk, I don't have any milk up here. So I'm just gonna use the cream in its, in its, um, in its stead in place of it. I'll give it a little bit of a stir. It looks a lot like the latte that I got from Starbucks the other day. Very, very similar in color. And by that I mean it is a light brown. Yeah. Yeah, well, it tastes, it tastes kind of like that. It's like a, it's a less flavor forward Starbucks apple pie. I don't know if the apple pie, apple pie latte, I think it is. I don't know. It's like a seasonal thing. I tried it once and it was like last week, but it tastes very, very similar to that. We could add more sugar and probably, like if we were trying to make an imitation Starbucks apple pie latte, this would probably be the recipe to follow. Just infuse cinnamon, allspice, clove into coffee, into hot coffee with a few orange wedges and then add equal parts of apple juice to it. Add some cream if you want it a little more latte-like. Add some more sugar if you want it more sweet. And I mean, if you're like me and you want a more po powerful coffee flavor, you could add an espresso shot, and luckily, because the stream has been going on for like two hours now, we have some espresso prepared. So if you're like me and you want an espresso shot in the morning, or at 10.30 p.m., you can probably add an espresso shot. There we go. Hello there, my name's Cameron. Welcome to Starbucks. How can I make your drink today? Oh, you want an espresso shot in there? You want a little bit of apple pie syrup? Well, we don't do syrups at this establishment. We're a lot more classy than the other chains here. We're actually gonna go into the back and get some quote unquote fresh spices. You don't know where they came from. We have no idea where they came from, but we're just gonna call them fresh because we put them into your coffee right then and there. Mm. You like where there's, there's a little more, a little less sweet, a little more on the bitter side? I'm gonna add a little bit more espresso to it and see if that changes the flavor. Yeah. More coffee for it than it was previously. That espresso that I have is not, not super duper potent anyways, but it does kind of even out those flavors for me. I think the, if I'm recollecting properly, the Starbucks one, I think probably did a better job of combining those flavors together. But for our first attempt, it's really not that bad. This is actually really tasty. I secretly, unbeknownst to the world at large, I'm making all of these different coffee drinks to see how I want to, like, I've been really, really meaning to try to make my own, like, coffee beverages at home. I'm really, really bad at making an iced coffee. I'm pretty bad at making an iced latte. And in general, excuse me, I'm pretty bad at cappuccinos and lattes in general because I really just haven't tried to make them. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to kind of, excuse me, trying to up my coffee game a little bit. The kind of stuff that you go out to this, because I find myself craving like coffee beverages from certain establishments like Starbucks or, or Saxby's or the different coffee shops in my area. And I'm like, I'm a mixologist. I should be able to know how to make these myself. And I feel like when I look them up online, they're like, oh, go to the store and buy some caramel syrup. Go to the store and buy some apple syrup. Get all these syrups and stuff and mix them with your coffee. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. Like, I feel like there's got to be a better way. And you could probably, you can make your own syrups. You can infuse your own coffees and stuff. You can add your own cream. If you're the kind of person who has access to like making your own cream and butter and stuff like that, do it. I feel like it's going to be wonderful. There's so many like... There's so many, I, I would potentially call them elitists or purists out there who are like, fresh ingredients are the only way to go. But I like to take more of a middle ground approach. If you can get fresh ingredients and like make it fresh, it adds a whole new angle to the drink. Because, you know, I guess because of like the desires of consumers and stuff, the cream that you get from the store is probably going to taste very similar to no matter what brand you get. They're all going to have a particular set of char flavor characteristics to them. As opposed to if you make it yourself, you're playing by your own rules. 
And I say that as if it's like something that's accessible to people. It's not accessible to everybody. But I think what's most accessible is to be able to go to the grocery store, pick up a syrup, and combine it together. And um, I guess that's why we have recipe books and stuff. But if you, have, if you have access to it, if you're in the unique position where maybe you live on a farm, you can make you make your own cream already. Go for it. I'm sure it tastes much better. And I'd love to hear about it too. Like if there are recipes out there to be able to create your own cream and stuff like that, I'm really really interested in how to do it. I've seen a lot of the people in in this in this Twitch tending community tend to make their own like liqueurs and tinctures and bitters and stuff like that. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. I want to be able to make that stuff myself. But I haven't tried it yet. Maybe one day, though. Anyways. Um, do a little bit of a summary so far. I think what I'm going to do... I'm gonna, the thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one more coffee cocktail this evening. Because I think we're kind of on a roll here. It feels like I, I, I've loved every single drink that has been made so far. It's really, really cool. And I kind of want to go out of my comfort zone a little bit. I kind of want to go out there and see if there's something else that... Something else that might, like, kind of... Uh, pique my interest and stuff but what we've gotten so far is we created four different drinks uh, or so five uh, five different drinks so far we started off with an espresso martini there are a ton of different recipes out there i will link everything into uh the discord server that we have um the when this video comes out next week as a vod on youtube there's an archive channel i'll put all the recipes and whatnot down there as well as well as being time stamped and whatnot and uh, some some of these will probably show up on instagram or a site called crafted pour which is which is um I don't think I had that linked in the VODs. I should start doing that for the for the cocktail ones. I just good idea, camera. Um, in any case, I try to make sure that it, like all these recipes and stuff get out there because the, the I mean, I'm a consumer and a watcher of videos like everybody else is, but I'm also a busy person rather as well. So oftentimes, like if you're gonna have a video that shows like, oh, I'm just gonna tell you what the cocktail recipes are. Sometimes I don't have the time to like write them all down, so I like to put them all down, and copy and pasteable form. It's just easy. It's so easy to do. And so that's what I like. That's what I do for other people. Anyway, espresso martini, we made that. We made the Alaskan duck fart shot, which combined whiskey and cream liqueur and coffee liqueur together. We created something called Asian iced coffee, which is essentially cardamom coffee, cardamom the spice. We made Spanish coffee, which we actually set on fire. It used some overproof rum, had some cream in there, had some orange liqueur in there. Um, did I mention we set it on fire? We set it on fire. It was awesome. It was... It felt dangerous. The, something in the glass was like kind of twinkling and had a funny sound to it, um, but nothing broke. Thank goodness. And then we just made some apple coffee. Um, it's not alcoholic. The apple coffee and the Asian iced coffee, no alcohol in it. Just figured I'm a coffee drinker and in the morning, I don't tend to like my coffee drinks alcoholic. I don't, I don't need them to be, at least not yet. Startup life is a little crazy though. So we'll see where that gets me, but this has been wonderful so far. And I want to see what happens next. So the last cocktail that I'm going to do tonight is not something that I have planned at all. I just kind of wanted to end it by, like, what I kind of want to be able to do is the whole point, I think, of being like a mixologist and stuff is to just combine different things together. If we can create a cocktail based off of the ones that we already made so far, awesome. If not, we just kind of go out there and find something a little unfamiliar just to try to, like, kind of exp expand the flavor palette and uh, kind of grow as individuals, I assume. So I think what I plan on doing, and if I could put this up on my screen, Screen. I wish I could, um, but I don't have that set up on my phone yet. I'm just gonna go on. I found Instagram is a wonderful place to go find cocktail recipes and stuff. The hashtag thing kind of makes it very easy. And so since the, Mr. Black Spirits does a coffee cocktail challenge every single year, and mixologists and uh, bartenders alike will kind of post their cocktail recipes to, I think, this particular hashtag on the internet. So I'm just gonna kind of scroll down and see what is on there that kind of piques my interest. If anything piques anybody else's interest, feel free to speak up. If there's like a particular combo that you're dying to, to see done and reviewed, I suppose we can do that. If not, don't worry. I got you. Sit back and relax. We're going to try to find something a little bit different, I assume. No promises, though. So essentially, I'm just going to kind of scroll through and see what kind of flavor combos. And if it piques my interest, I'm going to go for it. And we're going to make it. I see, on here at least, a Celtic espresso martini. It uses a cordial Breton. I don't know what that is, but it sounds very, very lovely. I can see a... I don't have a name for this one. But, ooh, Julian here. Welcome to the bar. We are all cool beans here today, so as I browse through my coffee thing over here, I'm gonna write you on the good bean board. It's only a good bean board this week. There's not usually beans on my board, but we happen to have beans on the board, so we're gonna go for it. Thank you, if I didn't say thank you already. 
Julian here. Like King Julian. Um, I see a black brew here. It's got dark chocolate liqueur. That's kind of that's kind of cool. I don't have any dark chocolate liqueurs in my collection. Otherwise, I would definitely go down that path. Um, is that visible? Oh, that's not visible at all. Ooh, excuse me. I'm still getting used to these new camera angles. We set them up about a month and a half ago. Anna and I moved apartments. It's wonderful. Um, yeah, I don't have any dark chocolate liqueur. I really should have something dark chocolate here at the bar. This is kind of, by the way, in case you're trying to get into like mixology and stuff, you could just do this. You can just scroll through Instagram and find things that pique your interest. And if you don't already have the ingredients, you know, find those good sales and go out and get them, stock them in your collection. The wonderful thing about liquor, liqueurs and liquors and stuff is that they don't necessarily go bad. Like I've had liquors in my collection that have been here for over a year now. And unless it's like a cream liqueur, it's like a wine based, like fortified wine, the flavor doesn't really change that much. So you can just go back to them all the time. I see something here that uses uh, black currant juice and gooseberry syrup, which sounds awesome. I'm going to bookmark that one because that sounds lovely, but I don't have any of that stuff here. I know black currant liqueurs exist out there. I think creme de cassis, I believe, is a black currant liqueur. And it's, I, I've never tried it, but I've always wanted to. I see something called Miss Darkish. Uh, uses rose liqueur. I don't have any rose. Oh, well. I see rose liqueur and coconut water. I don't have any coconut water. I do have a rose-infused gin. Only a, I don't know how much I have left of it, but I made that about a month or so ago, and um, still haven't done anything else with it because I haven't found a reason to. I see one that uses mezcal. I see sherry, specifically Amontillado sherry, which I've seen pop up on a lot of different collections so far. Again, I wish that I could put this up on the board, but I'm, I'm kind of, I, I don't have that prepared this time, so I apologize in advance, but if this is something I like, this might be something that I wind up doing a little bit more. If so, it'll technically work its way into the workflow, so. I see a coconut fat wash, Mr. Black, old-fashioned liqueur. I, I've never done fat washing before. That's, that's something I haven't yet tried, but I plan on doing it at some point. I see also here, I see something that uses italicus liqueur. That's a bergamot-flavored liqueur. I also don't have. It's a little... It's expensive. I'd have to order it online, and I don't have it yet. Um, but the more and more I find things like this, I kind of try to bookmark them down. I put them into a recipe collection that I have so that what I can do is I can, if I see that a particular spirit shows up more and more in my recipe collection, I'll go out and I'll try to find it if it's available. I see one that uses Demerara syrup. Unfortunately, I don't have any like that. I, I have the Demerara sugar, but no syrup. I, it also uses Irish stout, Guinness, Guinness Irish stout. I don't have any Guinness, unfortunately. There's so much stuff here. This one here uses apple-infused whiskey, a select liqueur. I don't know what the select liqueur is. And it's also all in Japanese, and I can't read half of it. Although there is a conveniently placed translation at the bottom. But I don't have any of that, unfortunately. I have one here. It's got four likes. But it's got Mr. Black, an Amaro, creme de banana, and vanilla syrup, and a pinch of salt. I like the idea. I'm going to like that. It was done like a month ago, but we always like to throw our support to other cocktail creators out there. I like the idea of banana and coffee together, but I wouldn't be able to do the vanilla. I wouldn't be able to do the vanilla much justice. If I had vanilla liqueur, I would totally go down that route, but unfortunately I do not. I often do this for hours on end. I sometimes start off my day. I'm going to be honest. My morning routine looks something like getting up out of bed, going immediately to the bathroom to either shave or sit on the toilet for like 20 minutes, and I just kind of scroll through social media. Sometimes it's cocktail social media. Sometimes it's other social media. It somehow wakes me up. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, but it's a nice way to kind of start the day off. I mean, if social media doesn't really do that for you, like it doesn't, it doesn't help in terms of your starting your day off, stay away from it. For me, it kind of helps out. Uh, and I don't know if it's the social media that helps specifically or if it's the fact that I'm staring at a screen that's very, very bright in the early morning. That might be doing it. Um, I see something here that uses Jägermeister and Mr. Black, naturally. Um, I think Jägermeister actually has a coffee-based spirit out there, which I've never tried before. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's wonderful, though. I personally like Jägermeister. It's very, very licorice-y. It's very fennel -y. It's very, very botanical, but like in a very, very deep kind of way. Uh, I've never, tr I've never had it, the chocolate liqueur that they have. Um, I'm actually really having a really, really hard time going through these cocktail recipes. A lot of the, some of the, the things that's most disheartening about scrolling through these recipes is seeing that, like, oh, I can't do this recipe because I don't have the right ingredients and stuff. I have, like, at least 50 different bottles of stuff back here, and I still don't have enough of to be able to make these, like, really, really cool cocktails out there. And, like, it's a little disheartening at first. 
but as you fill up your bar collect, I don't think it's, it's, it's almost encouraging in a way. You just kind of go out there. It, it's encouraging in a way that like, you can go out there and buy a, you can take like a gamer's choice of the liqueurs on the shelf and it's okay because more than likely if you take that bottle off the shelf somebody else out there has created a cocktail recipe to be able to utilize that liqueur in a way you never even imagined you don't necessarily have to go to the liquor store specifically knowing what you want to buy but if you go with an open mind and you just pick something random off the shelf rest assured somebody out there has also done the exact same thing and might even do it for a living and has found the perfect combo that you didn't even see coming which is I think really, really encouraging now that I think about it. I see one here that uses Chambord, which is a black raspberry liqueur. Stellum Spirits, I see them tagged. It looks like it uses wine, but I don't know what kind of wine. It doesn't really specify. Coffee, chocolate covered raspberries, and Mr. Black, and, and wine as well. Hmm. Interesting. Eat your veggie, I see here. Black coffee, keto espresso. There's a, there's a lot of stuff here. This is It's a little disheartening because I feel like... I almost want to apologize in a way. I thought this was going to work out a lot better as I just kind of scroll through social media and see. And eventually we'll get there. But if, I, if I'm if i scrolling through for another like 10 and a half minutes or so, I'll just mix something up randomly. And we'll just, we'll try to make it, we'll try to make it worth, worth your while. Because sometimes it's kind of like, it's like shooting, like shooting blind. You don't know if you're going to hit something. I see something here that uses an Amaro, a coffee liqueur, Oreo cereal washed vodka. Interesting. That is so interesting. You add salt and frangelico, which is a hazelnut liqueur. That sounds very interesting. I don't have any Oreos in this apartment. If I did, wow, what an interesting idea. I see something else, banana, I see something else, banana E. I see cognac. I don't have cognac, but I got brandy. Creme de banana, a particular type of syrup that I don't recognize, and Angostura bitters. And I don't see miss I don't see any coffee liqueur mentioned in this as well. Does it use? Does it use coffee? I don't think it uses coffee. Oh, interesting. Maybe the pandan syrup is coffee based. Hmm. Interesting. I don't really know. I see more. I see a uh, Mr. Uh, Black Forest, black liqueur, coffee liqueur, dark rum, strawberry balsamic vinegar shrug, shrub. Well, this stuff is getting really intense. I suppose if you're trying to enter your cocktail into a coffee, maybe I set my bar too high. If you're entering your cocktail into a cocktail competition, you're probably bringing something new to the table, I think. And this is way out of, dude, I would not consider myself experienced in the least bit, but now I feel even more like, like that feeling you get when you're, you feel like you're a small fish in a really, really big pond. That's kind of what I'm feeling like right here. And it's a little, a little intimidating. I see pineapple juice, I see some orja, I see espresso, I see spiced banana, spiced banana rum. I think we can work with that. So I don't have spiced banana rum, but I have a spi I have a spiced syrup per se. I have banana liqueur. I have pineapples that I can muddle up into a glass, and I have some orja, and I have espresso. So that's what we're gonna go with. That's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna bookmark this. I'm gonna like it so that I don't forget about it later. And I'm gonna send it to my fiance so I really don't forget about it. Or I'll send it to myself because I have two Instagram accounts. One's professional and one's not. I'm gonna make something that I found on the internet from the hashtag coffee cocktail challenge hosted by Mr. Black by somebody by the name of Cocktails with Mike. As a courtesy, we'll drop a follow. Naturally, we support our fellow ones. It's called Tadao, T-A-D-O-W, Tadao. And it utilizes, originally, 30 milliliters or about an ounce of uh, coffee liqueur, Mr. Black in this case, one ounce or 30 milliliters of spiced banana rum, 25 milliliters or also about an ounce of pineapple juice, 10 mils or about a third of an ounce of orja syrup, which is, I have I have pumpkin seed orja in my fridge, so I'm gonna use that. And about uh, 30 milliliters, 25, uh, 25 milliliters, or an ounce of espresso. Um, you combine it all up, shake vigorously, strain, and garnish with some coffee, be coffee beans. Tada means wow, usually in reference to an attractive woman. Thank you, Cocktails with Mike. I'm gonna take that and run with it. It took us a little while to get here. We have one more cocktail, and it's a, it's kind of a riff on this because we're just kind of using what we have. So that's what we're gonna go with. It needs to be shaken, so I'm gonna grab my shaker. I have a shaker over here. It was kind of spilled on the floor, unfortunately. You can clean it out a little bit. We're gonna go with it. And I also need a glass to go with it. So let me do a real quick clean of that. 
This has been nice and sanitized. I will also clean this glass as well. I don't actually have more than one Boston shaker. Otherwise, I would be utilizing them. Um, that's all I got. You work with what you got. And if you have to reuse by cleaning a couple things, that is totally okay. I have my shaker. In my shaker, I am going to add about an ounce of Mr. Black coffee liqueur. I don't want to bastardize this recipe any more than I probably already am doing here, so I'm going to stick with the OG Mr. Black coffee liqueur. I need about an ounce. Let's go for it. Mix it up in my shaking glass. We're not mixing it up just yet. I'm actually kind of running low on my Mr. Black. I'm being a little more liberal with my pours here because uh, over the weekend I received a bottle of the Mr. Black, um, a a a a a a I think Australian Amaro. I don't know why I'm guessing. Let me write it down here. Bittersweet Australian Aperitif by Mr. Black Coffee Amaro. I received that over the weekend, and that's rarer to find, at least in my experience, than just regular Mr. Black, which you can just find in any liquor store outside of Pennsylvania, like New Jersey. But Pennsylvania doesn't stock that stuff. At least they don't yet. Uh, I'm also going to add an ounce or about 30 milliliters of this here says spiced banana rum. I don't have spiced banana rum. However, I do have rum that has that kind of funky, ripe banananess to it, and it's actually not rum at all. I actually changed my mind. I'm not going to use rum here. I want to capture that whole banana flavoring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a spirit called Cachaca, which I actually tried for the first time last week. So look, the Cachaca that I was able to find at my liquor store has like the air of a very, very, very ripe banana. And I think that's going to go perfectly here. To attempt to emulate that spiced banana rum characteristic, I'm going to combine it a little bit with some other stuff that I have. Um, this is ripe banana E, but it's not specifically banana E. I also have banana liqueur way in the back back here. And I'm going to take that out and I'll add a smidge of it. The, uh, the measurements that I'm going to use here are going to be a little bit different because I'm not, I'm just kind of putting everything in the glass. The cachaca is going to be, if I had to split up the one ounce that I'm using, I'm probably going to use two thirds of an ounce of the cachaca like a sixth of an ounce of the banana liqueur because this banana liqueur, this 99 bananas is very potent. And then I'll add like a sixth of an ounce. Um, I don't know what that is in milliliters, unfortunately. That conversion I haven't quite memorized. Um, let's see, an ounce divided by six, 30 milliliters divided by six, 15, like, um, whoa, five, like five milliliters. I'll go with that. And I'm gonna also take some coffee, not coffee, uh, I have some, I have some syrup over here that I bought at a Renaissance fair. And it, you, it has notes of oak, burnt sugar, and toffee. Uh, it's by Yes Cocktail Company, and it says charred oak and maple. It's a syrup, so I'm gonna add that to that. It's not quite spice. Um, it's actually kind of the opposite of spice. It's not exactly spicy. It's the closest thing I have, so I'm gonna go for it. So in this ounce that I'm creating here, I'm gonna add mostly cachaca, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. If not, please somebody come in and swiftly correct me. I must try to be as correct as correct as possible, as I possibly can. Cachaca, about two thirds of an ounce. It smells so, so, so wonderful. I'm a little obsessed with this because like I said, I discovered it. I, I, I found it at my liquor store last week. I'm still not over the discovery of it all. A smidge, a scant six of an ounce or about five milliliters of banana liqueur. I've got these 99 bananas, uh, banana schnapps here. Put that inside. Pop that back in the back. This goes in the very, very back. I do not use it very often, so it's gonna take me a hot minute to come back up again. There we go. And I'm back. And then we're gonna finish off the rest of this ounce, this, the rest of this 30 milliliters, with some of this, um, this, this syrup that I have. It's not quite spiced, but it's got some um, oak and vanilla oats to it. Uh, the, pff, oat, oak, oak, oak and vanilla notes to it. Clearly I need to be drinking a little more water. I came home tonight and I was starving. I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna eat a ton of food. And I actually didn't eat that much today. Usually what I do for my own safety because I'm a rather small individual, I'm not a lightweight in terms of my alcohol consumption quantity until I get like buzz and stuff. However,
However, I know I have a very low BMI. I have very thin, I guess, fat deposits and stuff. So my body processes liquor differently than other people who uh, of my particular age group because I am presenting as male and I'm about in my mid-20s. So know your body. Know what's good for you. I wouldn't say that I'm completely out of my wheelhouse here. A little bit buzzed, but that's just kind of par for the course here. And I've been drinking water this entire time. So make sure to keep yourself safe there. Especially if you do something like this. We've made... At least three th to like two thirds of the, the things that we made tonight were alcoholic, and I've sipped every single one of them. So just kind of keep yourself safe there. Al like alcohol poisoning is not really a laughing matter, and I apologize if getting serious is kind of the killing the mood and stuff. But it, I, I kind of like I was in a, I was in a fraternity uh, in my in my college grad years, and nothing nothing bad ever happened at my particular chapter, thank goodness. But I've heard stories at other campuses and stuff where. Things just go bad because people, it, for lack of a better term, people just don't know their limits. And it's really, really, really unfortunate. It's very, very sad. And it, it kind of... Anyway, I don't really want to dwell on that. We will move forward. We need about another, uh, about an ounce or like 25 milliliters of pineapple juice. Um, I do have a bit of pineapple juice left, but I actually kind of want to do something different here. I have some pineapple uh, cubes that I uh, cut up uh, about uh, earlier this week. And I kind of want to muddle it into the bottom of it and kind of shake it up and see what happens. So I'm going to go for that. I still have that down here. I took it out of the fridge earlier and I forgot to put it back inside. So I'll probably not be using these afterwards because silly Cameron forgot. Um, I need, I could use my fingers. This is fine. I'm gonna use my fingers to drop, drop, let's say like three, three little pineapple wedges in there and see what happens. Um, I'm very, very curious to see what the pineapple flavor, excuse me, microphone, the pineapple flavor and the, um, Pineapple flavor and banana flavor are gonna do together. I feel like that's not totally out there. They both seem like very tropical type flavors, not specifically tropical. And really, tropical isn't kind of a genre, I guess. And it's not a, there's not really like like a it's not like a black and white line between genres of tropical fruits and stuff. It's kind of a gray area. And honestly, that's okay. Um, but I'll put my I'll put my pineapple wedges in there, and I'm gonna muddle it up. But I'll muddle that up in a little bit after I add the other, ingre other ingredients. I need about a third of an ounce, or about 10 milliliters of orja syrup. And then I go in my refrigerator right here. And I do have um, a bit less of my pumpkin seed orja, aka pepita orja, which we created about I think two or three weeks ago. I, I try to keep my things uh, good. It's, it doesn't look like it's gotten bad. Um, there's no awkward film showing up on the top, and so long as it doesn't smell bad, which it does not, uh, we will continue with it, and that's great. Um, but we made it using pumpkin seeds because it was like Halloween like two or three weeks ago, so we used that. Anyway, we need about a third of an ounce of that, so let's go for it. A little bit there, cool. Uh, that was about a quarter, quarter point two five, a little bit more. A little bit more. There we go. About a third of an ounce there, about 10 milliliters or so. And then the last thing we'll need is we'll need an espresso shot specifically. I still have what we could consider espresso because it was made using a pressurized brewing method um, behind me and I need about an ounce of that. Luckily, I'm glad I actually kept that around. Let's fill about a shot, let's go for it. About a shot, about one ounce, 30 milliliters, there we go. And next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna muddle things up in a glass. I'm also, I don't know if I necessarily need to be muddling because I'm gonna shake it up with some ice. So there might be some pulverization effect that happens as I shake things up. But, um, you know, there's no rule to this whole cocktail thing for the most part, unless people are, you know, stuck up about it and way too stuck in their own ways. Um, so I'm just gonna muddle things up. And then I'll shake it in it. I'll shake it in the glass and we'll strain it out. We'll properly double strain this so that we don't get a lot of the pulpiness of the pineapple because we're using some fresh pineapple chunks in there. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what this tastes like. I am, I don't, I'm not going with any expectations because I really, I really, really don't know exactly how things are gonna pan out here. So I'll muddle that up. Definitely gonna be washing this muddler later. And let me go get my, uh, some ice from my fridge, my freezer, uh, ice from my freezer. I don't keep ice in my fridge because that just, it just doesn't really work. I'm gonna grab a big ice cube. Let's have not tiny ice cubes, because that's just that's just how I do things. I don't really feel like I'm really bad at cracking cracking ice cubes, so I just tend to go for uh, the easy way out by taking small ice cubes and combining them with big ice cubes. One big ice cube, two little ice cubes. 
add liquid to our solid. It's very pulpy in there, and that's okay. In the meantime, I'm gonna grab a coupe glass because we will be straining it into, uh, double straining it into one of those. Let me grab one. Don't fall over, please. Thank you. It'd be very, very appreciated. I picked these coupe glasses up at a garage sale recently, and I was very, very happy. They're very, very pretty glasses. Um, it's very, very difficult to find coupe glasses. So, uh, anyway, shake it up. How's it looking so far? I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a little more aggressive with this because I have the pineapple chunks in there. I don't know what the what the most attractive shaking angle is. I still haven't quite gotten that down yet. Let me try this one. I don't know if this is any more attractive to be honest. Anyway, my fingers are very cold now. I think that's shaking enough. And uh, as I do with most things, I'm gonna get my sacrificial yoga blocks out here. I'm gonna do a little zoom in on this cocktail, this cocktail glass, and um, see if we get something out the other side. I didn't check to see whether there was a garnish on this. Let me check. A garnish with three coffee beans. Excellent. We can get coffee beans. Unfortunately, fortunately, unfortunately, I say three times over. My goodness. Um, the, the kind of angle that I have set up for this particular stream here, we're not really going to be able to see the top of it very well. And um, that's something I'm still trying to work on. So I apologize about that. Otherwise, um, it'll be cool. I'll post all the pictures and whatnot afterwards. This smells amazing. Oh my goodness. Oh, it smells so good. Let me grab my strainer. One strainer, two strainer, two strainer. Let's go for it. This was called ta -da! which is apparently a way of saying wow towards a very attractive woman specifically, or perhaps a very attractive man. We're not judging here. It's whatever you want. Very attractive individual. I'm pouring this all out. It's a little pulpy, so it's coming out a little bit sl a little slow, but I am totally cool with it. I'm gonna give this a little bit of a extra shake here, try to get as much more liquid out as possible. There is a fine, fine, fine crema appearing up on top of this. And I am absolutely looking forward to putting some coffee beans up on top. That is going to look wonderful as a garnish. Slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. I think that's all I'm getting from it. I really think that's all I'm getting. Well, there we go. Double strained. I dig that. I'm going to throw a couple of coffee beans up on top. Post haste. I have a couple over here. We were using them earlier. I have one bean, two bean, three bean. Let's do four. Four. Right in the middle. The one bean is kind of, you can kind of see the one bean floating on top of the other ones. Kind of cute. I like that. I'm going to take a photo of that as well because it is so, it looks so good. Again, not my recipe. I went online and I searched for it, so I cannot take credit for this. Although we did modify it a little bit, and that I guess I suppose I can take some credit for. Hello. Hey, we're zooming back out. Hi, everybody. I can smell the ripe banana from here. I can smell the cachaca. It is so, so prevalent. Um, it might be too prevalent. It might be completely unbalanced. I'm not exactly sure. We will have to, we will have to check and see. This was a modified Tadao. Uh, using some combination of a ripe rum type liqueur, cachaca in this case, uh, a little bit of, uh, I'll post the recipe later. I'm actually kind of blanking on what the recipe was, um, but I hope it tastes good. Let's try it. It smells like, um, I'm getting the cachaca right off the top and I also smell the coffee. That's a very, that's a combo I've never smelled before. Whoa. Oh, that is so cool. Wow. I didn't put a lot of sweet stuff in there. This is really, really sweet. There was there was a little bit of that syrup. There was the pineapple juice. Also there, there was the banana liqueur, which doesn't have a lot, it's not very sweet. The cachaca isn't that sweet either. Well, it is rather sweet. The orgeat, okay, the, it's the orgeat. The orgeat is adding a lot of that sweetness there. This is oddly sweet for a coffee-based cocktail, especially an espresso one. Oh, and it's super duper pleasant. I think, if I'm being honest, I think the cachaca is a little bit too prevalent. That ripe banana is right up on top, but it doesn't forget about the coffee. 
the coffee espresso and the banana are going super duper duper well together and i think the kind of the everything else around it is like accenting that i taste the banana i taste the coffee and it's actually coming across a little chocolatey because of the sweetness from the orja it's a lot more it's more chocolate feeling than it is coffee and with that i would say like relatively confidently this kind of tastes like a like a chocolate covered banana i think the pineapple is probably helping there there's definitely a lot of sweetness coming up from that pineapple because the pineapple is it's not super duper fresh so it's kind of it's kind of been there for a little while kind of like kind of sitting in its sweetness i find that overripe pineapple tastes a very very sweet to me kind of less on the tart side and i'm totally getting that here wow and it is super duper duper pleasant it is incredible I think maybe I'm just a sucker for cachaca because like last week when I tried cachaca for the first time, I was like, whoa, this is amazing. And I still feel that way. And I am completely blown out of the water every single time. It's like, it's like a good relationship. Every single time you touch, it feels like the first time. First time. Anyway, this is not a singing stream necessarily. This is a cocktail stream. And that's kind of it. That's all that's all I've got for this evening. Is we're about three hours in and I I need I think I need to go to bed. I got work in the morning, naturally. This was really, really cool. I I feel like over time, I'm kind of, I'm going to take a step back for a moment and kind of reflect on, I guess, the kind of last year or so. I've been realizing that I'm like, I like, I love being able to put on this kind of stuff. This is super duper fun, but I don't really want to talk about me. The whole the way that this particular show has kind of evolved i always felt like i wanted to do more cocktail stuff and so with a little bit of i guess engineering of time and whatnot we've been able to do so i don't think i uh i, I don't get tired of these things it's cool i wanted personally the reason why i started streaming originally was because i wanted to play more video games i wanted to do more of the stuff that i wanted to do and you know what having to have this camera in front is actually kind of helping with that and especially the mixology because I really liked mixing things together as a kid. I was the kid who would mix the different shampoos in the shower to see what they smell like and whether they wouldn't react with my body. And mixing things in like the refrigerator and the freezer and like, I never really did too much cooking. I was kind of afraid of hot things. Still kind of am. My tongue is just sensitive. In any case, I don't want to brag on that too much. This has been a joy and I thought, hope you had as much fun as I did. I'm gonna call things uh, a night this time around, but first I'll give a quick roundup. We made an espresso martini, we made a uh, we made Asian iced coffee, we made a duck fart shot, the shot of Alaska, we created Spanish coffee, we created apple coffee, which kind of tastes like the apple latte that Starbucks is serving right now around this season, and we created a modified tadal, which was created by, I think it was Cocktails with Mike? Cocktails with Mike? Cocktails with Mike on Instagram. Oh, 104 weeks ago, it appears. Wow, that was a really, really long time ago. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Even if it was from years and years and years ago, it can still withstand the test of time. This has been wonderful, everybody. I'm calling it a night. Thank you, everybody. So Hey there, everybody. This is Cameron with the X here, and apparently I switched to the wrong end screen at the end of this stream to be able to properly record what I was saying at the end. I just want to take a moment to step back for a bit and say thank you for just encouraging me to do what it is that I really, really like to do. This is me post-stream, a couple of drinks in, and still oddly caffeinated. And I just want to say that I appreciate everything. All of you... And please, please continue doing whatever it is that you do that keeps you happy. I feel like in times like this, it's not nice to remind ourselves that even if there's nothing out there acknowledging you, nothing out there validating you, if you are having fun with it, then you should continue going along with it. And this probably sounds corny and maybe a little, little, yeah, corny, but I'm going to go with that. In any case, um... Uh, my voicing over is now done. I need to clean up after the bar stream. Thanks, everybody. Bye.